Welcome, everybody, to uh, the Board of Selectmen meeting. We um, opened an executive session earlier for the purpose of approving the executive session minutes, discussing strategies with respect to collective bargaining updates with the town manager relative to police, fire, dispatch, and DPW unions, because an open meeting may have had detrimental effects on the bargaining positions of the board. Considering litigation strategy with, with respect to petition of Eversource Energy for zoning exemptions, Concerning the purchase, sale, and lease of the value of real property in relation to the trails in the city of the downtown center. And uh, Norman Kamalo and Elaine Lazarus were in there meeting with us. So, um, sticking with tradition, uh, let's uh, start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Individual and justice. justice for all. What Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Okay, um, let's start with a public forum. Residents are invited to share ideas, opinions, or ask questions regarding town government. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to come up? Oh, absolutely, come on up. Right Have a seat. Hi. My name is Mike Bolson, and uh, I work primarily on Center Trail uh, or any trail. And um, I would like to uh, initiate conversation on funding for trail maintenance. And um, maybe when we buy a piece of property to um, include that when we buy the property. That's about it, I just wanted to start the uh, oh, okay. conversation. <laughs> now, <laughs> it's a give and take. <laughs> Not necessarily. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Normally, yeah, normally we don't uh, we don't do give and takes. It's uh, we, it's uh -huh. people present to us and then we uh, put it there for a later agenda item. But as you know, I I proponent of uh, of the trails in town, and uh, and I we do appreciate all the work that you do volunteering to uh, take care of the town and uh, take care of all the town's trails, especially the center trail and and uh, and all you do and you know, all four seasons, you know, cutting down the trees. Moving, clearing the brush, raking the leaves, blowing the leaves, picking up the picking up the trash. It's uh, the, the town uh, owes you a lot of grat great deal of gratitude. And Thanksgiving week, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, but uh, but we do understand that uh, you know, and it's come up uh, at the um, at uh, Senate Trail Committee that uh, we do need a bigger budget to to do more than just the Senate Trail because the uh, um, the Upper Charles Trails Committee really only. Uh, is supposed to be taking care of the center trail, but we do need. Uh, I think we have looked into another another trail group, and we should uh, look into funding for that group. Yeah, I, I was just going to mention that you know, for instance, there's one of our items often on ambulance fund gifts. There's so many people that use the trails, and enjoy the trails that, you know, perhaps a town fund started the trails fund that people might make a contribution to for trail maintenance. Um, might be one one idea so right now we have no budget line item for trail <coughs> maintenance in Hockington no mr. Kamal no um, we've relied on volunteers uh, as well as uh, at times time permitting uh, DPW resources so I mean it does seem a little odd we have a lot of great assets in our trails. We have a lot of miles of trails, like we have miles of roads. Something to think about. Mm -hmm. Just question again. I know we don't want to do too much discussion of this, but I guess the trails club is just a club. They're not a committee. So is there any, is there an actual committee in town that addresses trails at all? Well, we have the upper trails, but it's But that, that's for that trail. We have open space. I know on the open space. Um, that I'm on, we've discussed that, um, but we don't, not, nothing. Yeah, because I was just I mean, thinking. It's all, you know, we'll get a, like, 
uh, on the uh, Hughes property. Mike went in and you know we we allotted a little bit of money for him to go in and do a lot of work. So you know it basically probably paid for most of his gas, <laughs> none of his time. Uh, he did a great job as he always does. But I don't think that we have any uh, set budget. Or, or other set committee when it comes to that. You know, the upper trails handle center trail, we handle the open space. And, um, but Would it be appropriate for the town manager and his team to figure out kind of what surrounding towns do for trail maintenance in terms of budget and governance? And maybe at the statewide level too, what are the guidelines? And then come back to us in a few weeks with some ideas. The one thing that I was thinking of is, um, you know, some sort of a stewardship where you could have a trails group that took it upon themselves to maybe each year walk all the trails and make a note of what types of maintenance is required or get input from people and at the very beginning at least keep kind of a running list of the types of things that are needed and an idea of what it would cost and that would be a start to at least know where funds are needed and maybe if you then had a trails fund you could um, allocate funds or they could apply to that fund just it would it would help to f for one thing keep keep a running tally of what's needed and have a sense of what the costs are and then find some funding sources and instead of just every year just saying you know it really needs work and it's just kind of uh, not organized so the trails club does have a volunteer day once a year and they come up on center trail and clean out the ditch. So, and John was there, yeah. That's it. And then uh, HALT has different um, trail, um, um, I'm, I'm, I lost the word, <laughs> stewards. Mm -hmm. They have stewards for different trails. Yeah. And uh, um, because theirs aren't paved or the sand surface, it it doesn't need a lot of um, care, and the trash does pile up sometimes on some other trails, but because I do a daily patrol on the center trail, uh, there is uh, hardly any trash, but that's a daily. Um, patrol. Well, I'll, that's all well and good too. And first of all, thank you very much for you know, volunteering your time uh, to this. And I think that the town's been lucky to have all these various stewards for different trails. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, you know, there are times where things take actual, you know, capital money as opposed to just uh, work effort. We're lucky to get the work effort uh, from volunteers right now, but. You know, we need to be prepared to uh, pony up when it's needed. You know, and it can be something that's, you know, a result of, of their efforts where, you know, maybe there's uh, lots of brush that needs to be chipped or, you know, uh, limbs that need to be chipped or, you know, maybe there's a storm that comes through and creates even more of a mess. We just need to be prepared for something like that. So we should probably start discussing that through this budget cycle or taking a look at it and uh, allocating something. And I think I'll just take this conversation one step further. It's related, but not related. Um, you know, I know that in uh, various areas also, and I think of Upton State Forest, uh, there are also fire roads uh, that go through there. And depending on the year, sometimes these fire roads are well-maintained and other times they aren't. And I guess I'm wondering, I would assume that that would be the state's responsibility to maintain, um, but with our fire department likely being uh, the people who would be responding in those areas, I'm just wondering, Chief, if, if you guys do any type of uh, annual inspection of any of these trails to say, hey, you know, this one's in rough shape. We need to call the state and get them on this. You know, is there anything like that? I can't say we have, but I do think you're correct. The state does do some annual maintenance of it to keep it open. I think it's their responsibility. Okay. Um, but you know, if we could, if we could come up with some type of plan or something like that, because like I said, I've seen some years where uh, you know I can be taking a walk or riding my bike through there, and I can barely get down the middle of a fire road without getting poked in the eye. Uh, so certainly, that's not the best thing for a, 
uh, larger vehicle to get through. Yeah, yeah Chief, could you send a drone up there to check out what's going on? <laughs> All right, great. Thanks for bringing it to our attention, and we're gonna we're gonna look into it, Mr. Mr. Kamala as well. Okay. Thanks, Thank Mike. You. Yeah, we'll, uh, Thanks, we'll, Mike. We'll invite you back in when we put it on the agenda. Okay. All right. Thanks, Thanks. Mike. Really. Thank you very much. Okay. Is there anybody else that would uh, like to uh, address the board? All right. Then let's go into the consent agenda. Uh, ambulance fund gifts. The board selectmen will consider accepting a gift of twenty dollars from the Andem Patraka 1996 Revocable Trust. Uh, to the ambulance fund, uh, special officer appointment, appointing Michael Sutton as a special officer. And those are the only two that we've got. Does anybody want to break anything out? In minutes. I break oh. out two and three. Oh, in the board minutes, yes. Yeah. Okay, so now let's do all three separately. Chair, point of order, could we consider opening that public hearing for the tax classification? Are we, are we at time? Are we right? Excellent. Okay. Number five. Yep. Oh, well, gosh, I'm looking at the time and it's throwing me way off. Okay, yeah. You got to get that clock we'll be fixed. that late, though. Okay. <laughs> Jim will entertain a motion to open the public hearing to determine the percentage of local tax levy to be borne by each class of real estate property in accordance with Chapter 40, Section 56, to certify the Commission of Revenue through the Hopkinton Board of Assessors Property Assessment full and fair cash valuation. Oral and written comments from the public will be accepted at the hearing. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We are open. Good evening. My name is John Neese. I am your town assessor. Uh, I'm joined I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Chair. I thought yeah. we were going to open the hearing yeah, and then no, continue no. it until we get through our business and we'll come to the hearing itself. Oh. Okay. All right. Could you? Okay. Yeah, just to be a please stand by for a few. Stand by a little bit. You can stay there. There's no one else coming up before you. Oh, okay. You Quick, I think. Okay. So, uh, Chair, maintain a motion to. Uh, I uh, accept the minutes uh, of 11 17. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. The ambulance fund gift. Yeah, this is kind of my baby. So um, it's nice to see every week, whether it's, you know, we did have when uh, Tom McIntyre passed away, we had a very generous group of people that were donating and donating and donating for this. And, it's nice to see. I don't know if if if, um, if it's taken some legs from that from being mentioned or whatever, but um, you know it's nice to see uh, people donating to this. We know it goes to a great fund, and uh, it will inevitably help the public in fire safety and and um, just overall safety uh, moving forward. So that's my spiel there. It's great. Thank you. Every week, you're right. Every every meeting. Yep. <coughs> Very grateful. Thank you, everybody. Okay, so Chair, I'll entertain a motion to accept the uh, gift from the uh, from the trust fund. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Passes. Special officer appointment. Yeah. So um, Mike Sutton was a cop in town for uh, 20 or so years. Did a great job, sergeant. You're a brilliant mind, a great cop, and it's nice to see him back on as a uh, as a special. So we're glad to have him back. Thanks. So. Anything else? Beautiful. Chair, I entertain a motion to uh, appoint Michael Sutton as a special officer with the term expiring June 30th, 2020. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? It passes. Welcome, Michael. Okay, sorry, there is one just before you guys. Temporary um, uh, alcohol license, 3B connections, doing business as uh, real Hopkinton High School Housewives. Or second one, we'll consider approving a special temporary alcohol license for wine and malt beverages only. Requested by Darlene Hayes on behalf of 3B connections, doing business as Hopkinton House Housewives for the fourth annual Hopkinton Housewives Shopping for a Cause fundraiser benefiting the Hopkins Center of the Arts on Sunday, December 10th, 2017, from 4 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. at the HCA. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Welcome. Thanks. 
So, um, and you are? John and Hayes. Um, this is our fourth year doing this event, second year at the HCA, first two years we're at Holman Pond. Um, this year we decided to pull, apply for a temporary permit so that we could keep the business local, hire Rachel and uh, Marty's to handle it and keep the money here. Uh, last year we actually hired Peppers and uh, had their servers and their, some, their wholesale bring things in. Um, but we want to keep the money in town. We're supporting a charity in town. And that it. John's been there. Uh, Brian's wife's been there. Things like that. It's a very uh, kind of low key event. There's a piano player. It's kind of social shopping, craft, buy a scarf, have a small pour of wine. You get glasses that are only this big. <laughs> Anything that isn't alcohol is handed to you in a polar beverage, a water bottle, or seltzer. Any questions for you? Okay. Yeah, does this count as one of the um, <coughs> events at the HCA that are, they're allowed to have alcohol at? Yes, it does. Okay. This is at request of the HCA actually asked us to not only do this again, but to um, combine it with their um, Artesian Jury Boutique will be part of this. Okay. So instead of them hosting the event, they've asked us to combine okay. it and not manage it for them. So they only get a certain amount of <coughs> um, applications to, I mean, events to serve alcohol through the year, so. Mm -hmm. uh, That's not one of theirs. They're allowed to have their own. Right. That, that, that don't count against the, against the clock. But I believe that uh, yeah, there was, a, there was a, a number. So uh, per year, and so we're now at the tail end of the year. It's a, yeah, yeah, at the end of the year. And they're going into a capital campaign. And this is, um, a way to help fundraise. They can't get money like the library does from federal or state, so everything's done by private. And the library definitely did a little bit of hit on them for their last gal and everything. So we just want to make sure that they're the benefactor of it. Who's 3B Connections? That's myself, Patricia Duart, Connie Wright. We have an LLC, and underneath that we have the DBAs of several other organizations. So 3B Connections is a for-profit venture? Yes. It is? The benefactors are not for profit. It's a not-for-profit. It's What's not a non-profit. It's a not-for-profit. 3B Connections is? Yes. It's an LLC that's yes. a not-for-profit? Not for I don't know that kind of stuff. Is so there insurance that goes with 3B? The insurance is actually through the HCA. We use their uh, their insurance, but we each actually have our own business insurance too. It's a great event. I'm, I've been to the event. I think it's a great event. I'm just I'm confused about 3B Connections, Real Housewives, which frankly I have some other issues with, um, and the HCA and alcohol for a for-profit venture. It isn't a for-profit venture. They're the benefactors of this. We're just the organizers of the event. Right, but the license would go to a for-profit venture. Is that in line with the HCA license process, Mr. Kamal? Um, if it was I a straight-up nonprofit, yes. that's yeah. one thing. But if it's not a straight-up nonprofit, then there's something else. Like, if there's people making money through this process, that needs to be understood. There is no people making money through this process. So 3B does not make money? Does not make a dime. But does 3B make money in general? No. It, it, it actually gives money every quarter away 100%. In the last three years, it's given away over $15,000 while we all have our own regular jobs. Do you guys take a salary? No. Zero. So why is it not a nonprofit 501c3 then? Because we hadn't gotten to that point yet. So when we registered, a, it only registered a year ago. And that was just so that we could funnel paperwork with the state. So we had a CFO funnel, file the paperwork. Um, but as far as the, whatever the profit or salary situation is, I'm not clear on that. But there is, is this still in line with the HCA process? It, Brian, if, if the question is whether the HCA can contract with a private entity, yes, they can. They can. Yeah. Okay. Right. We're basically the man, like an event company coming in to manage this event for their benefit. But 
to clarify, you're coming in to manage this event for their benefit, but you're not taking any payment for it. We take zero you're, payment for it. Right. You're just paying any very specific costs. So right. So we, we, we paid for the the application. We'll pay for any like hard things like waters from Polar and right. napkins and paper cups and right. all that. We pay for all that. But there's no administrative fees or anything? Zero. Okay. I guess I'm not clear about LLCs and non-for-profits or not-for-profits. I thought an LLC was an LLC, period. Yeah. So you're either for profit LLC or you're not. I don't think there's a not for profit LLC out there. I could be wrong. And I could be wrong. I mean, I wasn't the one, I mean, I'm listed as that, one. That's a very important point, I think, for people to understand because there's a lot of stuff that goes on in Hopkinton around Real Housewives. Mm -hmm. Not all of it good, by the way. And yet you talk about being a not for profit, but if you're an LLC, you are for profit, at least you're incorporated to be set up for profit. So I think there needs to be clarity about that going forward in any of these things where the town's involved. Mm -hmm. um, so if something doesn't line up with me, but specific to this event, it's a good event. It's a great event. Okay. So let's move. Uh, the chair will entertain a motion to um, approve a, a temporary alcohol license uh, on behalf of 3B Connections uh, to be taking place at the HCA on December 10th from 4 to 7.30. So moved. Can I just ask one question? Well, can you do a can you second and then we'll... And then second. We'll, it was seconded. Okay, and then uh, and that, any further questions? Yeah, just, just a clarification because I noticed on the... Um, Permitted. There was a phrase about uh, that it had to be the liquor had to come from a wholesaler, cannot purchase from a package store. So I assume when you said that it's coming from Marty's, Marty's in that case is actually going to be bringing it in. It's not going to be right. purchased Marty's at Marty's. Purchased, Marty's will actually Marty's be on purchased site. from a wholesaler. We write them a check. Okay. And then um, it was the same thing. We pay, but we pay this. Marty's is also the poorer. Right. So it's, it's Rachel who'll be doing the poor. And this was just to keep it in town um, and, ke and have the revenue go to si a business in town that's been very good to the town. Um, if not, it could stay with Peppers, and it actually costs less money to do it that way. But even though Marty's is a package store, Mr. Kamal, the fact that they're bringing it in and participating in the actual pouring, that makes them the whole, I mean, that, that meets the criteria, because I did notice that. It's the same as how they did with the library. The, there is a list of uh, distributors uh, approved by the ABCC uh, to do this type of uh, work or service. Okay. Uh, and I, I think the question then is <coughs> if Marty is approved to, right. to distribute. So in Hoppington, Marty's is a liquor store, so you see it as right. that. Oh, right. Marty's has got a bigger umbrella, so Marty actually is a distributor too. So they they, they, they have their own yep. labels of wine. They have their own yep. yeah, they have their own packing. They own um, the whole distribution company in Framingham that services this area. Okay. 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 Any further questions? But do we have an insurance certificate? Oh, the it's insurance is under HCA, correct? Yeah. And not three B. Does three B have an insurance certificate? I don't know. I don't think so. Not for this. HCA was taking holding. I mean, Kelly's would be here too if you want to hear, but she's signed permission. It's HCA's emergency policies, therefore, when does the applicant I have need to own, have insurance? I have my own insurance because I'm safe serve and I'm TIP certified, but I'm not pouring and stuff like that. But I have my own insurance and I'm bonded, but it's not right. But I just want to ask Mr. Kamal through the chair um, does the applicant need to provide a certificate of insurance? For these events, or can HCA can they operate under HCA certificate of insurance? In 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 terms of whether they can operate under the HCA, uh, there needs to be appropriate language that names the applicant as the additional insured. Is right. that on the in documentation that we received? Is there a is there a COI that names three B as an additional insured? They, really, they did a separate line item that lists um, Real Housewives three B, and also I think they listed Marty's. But Real Housewives is not incorporated in any way, shape, or form. It's a DBA. So that's nothing. That's chit chat. Legally, that's nothing. DBA means nothing. 3B is the corporation or the LLC, right? So is, the, is 3B named as the additionally insured? 
we can on the HCA COI. It was on the paperwork I saw. Um, it was a second set of um, insurance documents they right. sent in. Yeah, we can verify with Maria tomorrow. Right. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. I just think that that needs yeah. to be that that covers three B. Right. You need to have that. If it's not there, okay. then there's no insurance. Then we all have a problem. If something goes wrong. So I think we just have to clarify who's who's really doing what. Okay. So do you, do you want to? No, it's, we've got a motion and a second. I'm just making the point. But. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing then, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Aye. Okay. Okay, sorry, 17 minutes late, but okay. Okay, We're ready to go. talk about tax levy. <laughs> Everybody loves talking taxes. So uh, good evening, everyone. My name is John Neese. I am your town assessor. I have with me Mary Jo Lafreniere, who chairs the Board of Assessors. She will introduce the other members of the board momentarily, and then we will go through a PowerPoint presentation. She will take part one, uh, and then I will take over for a few graphic slides uh, in part two. So Mary Jo. Well, first thing I want to do is, is uh, wish everybody a very happy Turkey Day, and uh, go Hillers. <laughs> had to get that in or my son would be <laughs> upset with me. Um, I would first like to introduce the rest of the Board of Assessors. Uh, Leah Battle Rafferty and Leslie Fakira. Would you girls stand up, please? And I want to say they are doing a fantastic job. They are very quick on the pickup. They're taking all their courses. They're just sailing along and, and it's been a wonderful, smooth transition uh, to the new board. We're very, very lucky to have them. Uh, okay, I just uh, wanted to do a, a little bit of an overview <coughs> for the public. Uh, the basic reason for this hearing is to give you the information to, so you can make your decision as to whether or not we want us uh, split tax rate, what they call a split tax rate, in the town of uh, Hawkington. And that would be to shift the burden from the residential to the commercial industrial by certain percentages, which we will present to you in the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, <coughs> we do, don't have any open space uh, to discuss. Uh, tax rate impact of residential exemption. It, it really doesn't work in a town like Hoppington because it splits the rate within the residential section and it's basically for towns like Nantucket or Martha's Vineyard that have big summer populations and they split the rate between their year-round residents and their uh, commercial and, and, their summer, and their summer residents, I should say, or their higher their higher homes, their higher uh, assessed homes. And it works out in communities like that that have a tremendous amount of, of uh, rental properties, et cetera. Only 15 towns in the entire state of Massachusetts do it out of 351. So Hoppington really is a bedroom community and uh, doesn't really work in, in a community of this size. Uh, there's also a Commercial rate uh, exemption for small businesses. However, that does shift the rate also within the businesses community. So in order to take some off of a small business, you're going to be adding to the rest of your business community. And again, only 12 out of the 351 towns do it because it's, it's really only good in maybe Chelsea or someplace that has a huge amount of commercial, large commercial properties. Uh, mm -hmm. The assessed value for the town of Hawkington this year is three billion seven hundred and twenty-three million twenty-six thousand five hundred and forty-four, uh, and we are still maintaining an eighty-four sixteen split. We are eighty-four percent residential, uh, an open space property, and only sixteen percent commercial and industrial. And John says it's been like that for the last five years. 
it's been like that since I was in the assessor's office. It's been like this for more than 20 years. Uh, I don't remember it ever going below 80 uh, or an 80, 84 split. And uh, I can't remember any year where, where that has changed uh, tremendously. I mean, a couple of 82, I think, one year and that sort of thing. But we are definitely what they call a bedroom community. Uh, and residential is our bread and butter here. The average single family home uh, this year, it's been a sort of recertification year. And the average uh, went from 548,595 to 571,490. We have a lot of new construction. We have the significant new construction is on condominiums and single family homes. And the condominiums were 868 as opposed to 789 last year. Uh, I don't know if you have any other questions uh, about that. Uh, be glad to, we'll be glad to tell you at the end of the PowerPoint program. New growth, the, the one everybody wants to know about all the time, um, is in 100, uh, a million six hundred and <coughs> yeah six hundred and sixty six million thirty nine thousand five hundred and ninety two or a tax valuation of two million seven hundred eighty nine dollars uh, eighty nine thousand four hundred and sixty five tax dollars. Uh, last year it was two million one hundred thirty uh, one hundred thirty five thousand five hundred and ten. So we have increased new growth somewhat. Uh, Largest categories of growth are single family homes, condominiums. We have increased apartment and congregate housing in town, and our personal property, property class has also increased. 99 new building permits, post tax levy, the amount of money needed to, to raise through taxation to fund municipal government is about 70%. And the, uh, we get the, the remainder from other sources like New Grove. So the single uh, residents can uh, expect an increase of about 5% more or less in their taxes this year. And that would be more if they put on additions uh, made of putting in swimming pools or, or made different things uh, to the house, it would be even a little bit more. Uh, we have a few charts, which we, I will leave for the PowerPoint. And uh, the board will remain here after the closing of, of the, uh, after the PowerPoint presentation. And we will answer any questions that you might have for us. Thank you. So uh, I'll, take, I'll take over with just a few more. Um, so usually we come in with a proposed tax rate. Um, we have question marks this year because uh, all of the financials have not been completed. Um, you know, I am expecting that it will be somewhat similar to the current tax rate. But I can't give you that answer right now. Uh, and in general, the different classes of property went up anywhere from two to six percent. Uh, we have a chart which shows. So hard to read, but we we uh, will be putting both the letter that Mary Jo has gone through and the PowerPoint slides uh, online for the residents um, shortly, but um, actually better, I guess, for me to read these. So um, single families, about 4%, commercial uh, property, about 5.5%, and industrial property, about 2%, which gave us that generally 2 to 6% statistical range on the previous slide. This just shows in graphic representation the split between uh, the residential property at 84% and then the combination of commercial, industrial, and personal property at about 16%. And uh, again, this just shows the uh, increase in the average single family uh, assessment. We have run this chart from fiscal year 2011 uh, up through uh, fiscal year 2018. And in 18, the number that is there is the 571,490 that was presented to you as the average single family value. The next one is the um, average single family tax bill in Hopkinton uh, over that same period of time. Um, for fiscal year 17, that chart shows $9,216. 
uh, 18, since again we don't have the tax rate set, uh, does not have a number, but is proposed to maybe be somewhere around 9,600, um, or, or an increase of about $375. And this compares the tax bill um, in Hopkinton to uh, some of the other um, abutting or ge uh, geographically or demographically similar um, communities to Hopkinton. And this one just shows the top five uh, taxpayers uh, in Hopkinton. Not very clear on this slide, but it's also in the letter that, uh, that was presented earlier. To something that you're interested in in terms of making a decision as to whether to vote a single rate or a split rate and uh, basically what this shows in blue is the decrease in total tax dollars to a single family residential property for example uh, if you go to a split rate and the corresponding increase uh, in the tax dollars to a commercial or industrial or personal property tax bill uh, if you uh, if you split the rate. So basically uh, the zero represents a single tax rate so there would be no difference for residential property or commercial industrial and uh, personal property. If you split the rate uh, so that the residential rate is basically one percent lower um, then you're increasing the commercial industrial and personal property tax by about five percent. Uh, and it follows a similar pattern, so if you reduce the single family rate, we've just given you some examples of 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, or 5%, it will um, geometrically, I guess, uh, increase commercial, industrial, and personal property tax by 5, 10, uh, 15, 20, or 25%. And uh, this slide, we also, this is excess levy capacity. Um, we are here to open the hearing tonight. Uh, you do have some decisions you can make, uh, but you'll need to continue the hearing to your next Board of Selectmen date because we can't tell you at this point what the excess levy capacity is. But there will be some. And these are the, these are the decisions that you can make tonight. Uh, you need to um, decide if there will be an open space discount or if there will be a residential or small commercial exemption and whether or not there will be a single tax rate or a split tax rate. Again, the LA-5 cannot be signed until we know the excess levy capacity uh, and then um, you will, we will come back to, a, uh, to the next meeting and tell you what that is and have you sign that document which is a requirement for the um, for the tax rate to be set. And it can't be signed at this point because it clearly states the excess levy capacity and since all of the financial reports aren't finished, we don't know what that excess levy will be. Um, and uh, if or when you are ready to vote, I think I would just uh, suggest that I think you have to take public comment if there is anyone here because the newspaper advertisement uh, that, um, that advertises the classification hearing um, you know, mentions that. So. We're finished, but we're happy to entertain any questions. Can we go back to the slide, right, that slide there? Can, can we see that over there, please? Um, can we? I'm sorry, which one? Uh, the one with the questions, you know, for the Board of Selectmen oh. to consider. This one. It, yeah. So I'm very familiar with the fourth question there and whether or not we have a single or a split rate. And I think the argument is pretty clear that a single rate uh, is the way to go because a split rate does very little for the taxpayers, but really hurts the commercial in the town. But we can get into that. But that's the one we've always discussed and debated for about three minutes, and we've made our decision over the last 10 years of been doing it. The other three questions look like they're new to me. No. No, they've been here. They're, they're, they're here so every year. They're, they're it's Why don't I remember ever discussing, debating, or voting on them? They because they, they don't pertain terribly much to Hoppington. And, we, and I have made the presentation on them each before. And it, when I touched on the letter tonight, I did try to talk about them. Open space, basically what we've got in, in Hoppington is uh, residual land left over from uh, subdivisions. And it's non, pretty much non-usable, non-buildable. 
or it's land that when we did a cluster zone we you know they have to leave so much uh, available it's not buildable so it's already given a, a reduction in value as opposed to an, an open space at full and open value because it's an it's an unbuildable lot so it, it's already classified as unbuildable and and therefore it is it is a discount from market value so uh, as it's as I said if you look here this is the this is the whole uh, thing on the uh, <coughs> on the open space and only one town out of 351 actually does this there would be the answer huh yeah, there's the answer right there. oh. and well now we can go, go on to the, the next part i've got the, the residential exemption which i touched on which is good for towns like nantucket or, or martha's vineyard in which they split the rate within the residential class which means the higher residents pay more than the year-round people or the lower lower valuation, uh, but you're increasing within the class by so much. So their properties, their rental properties, vacation homes, and higher value properties get hit with a higher tax rate than your than their year-round residents, and that's only being used in 15 out of 351 communities. In which case, we don't really fall into that category either. And in the small commercial exemption, uh, you'd be shifting the burden within your commercial and industrial class from businesses with 10 employees making a million dollars or less to businesses making more than that. Um, so they would be paying more and the, the smaller businesses would, would be paying less. But you'd be shifting it within that class. And uh, only 12 out of 351 towns find that uh, worth doing and, and like I said that would be a community that has a tremendous amount of large commercial industrial that can absorb it as opposed to uh, you know and, and a smaller amount of uh, small business and mr. chairman if, yes, sir. if I may um, you know I think uh, one of the reasons you may not remember is that Hopkinton historically has voted well I'm senile we all know that no, no. <laughs> <laughs> not to have an open space discount, not to grant a resident, residential exemption, and not to grant a commercial exemption. Now, I'm not saying that you should or you shouldn't, but um, you know, historically you have voted not to have any of those, so it's been a rather short discussion for uh, probably a number of years. The other issue, as she mentioned, is that you are, by doing any of those, you are not raising additional tax dollars. You are just shifting the burden for each of those within that class, so it doesn't give you any additional tax money or additional uh, any I think, additional Yeah, I think we're aware of that, but I'm with Mr. Hur. I've been here for nine years, and uh, I remember every year having short conversations on the single tax rate or a split tax rate, but I don't ever remember discussing any of the others. If you go back <laughs> and you see the letters that we have presented to you, I'm sure it is. You, I'm it's, sure it's it is. I just don't remember the board. And we have given it, it to you. We have given these to you well before the I'm, classification. I'm not questioning that it was presented so to us. I just don't remember us discussing. It has been early. presented <laughs> to you. I presented. I'm it. not questioning that at all. <laughs> And I don't know if it would help, but there are very limited communities in each category. I have a list of them if you'd like me to read them to you. Or no, I don't our, know our issue is not with what currently stands in Hopkinton. Mm -hmm. Our issue, and I'll say it again, while it might have come out in the letter, we may have talked about it in the past, I forget a lot. A lot of it I have to forget when I do this job. Okay, But one thing I don't forget is when we vote on something. And I, I would challenge somebody to show me the minutes of a meeting where I voted to have a split rate inside the residential rate, or I voted to have a split rate on commercial, or I voted to have a split rate or a different rate for open, open space. space. I agree. Yeah. I just yeah. don't ever remember voting it. You haven't voted it. You haven't because voted. you you haven't because you don't done it. You yeah. haven't wanted okay, to. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> you haven't split the rates. Well, you haven't. You've decided yeah. not to split yeah. the yeah. rates. So you yeah. haven't yeah. voted but on we it. You did vote. You did vote. Uh, uh, it's my floor. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. So, Mr. Sestari and I are now getting somewhere. <laughs> Ten years into the board, at least we're acknowledging that we haven't voted on it. That's what he and I are worried about. Right. Is why are we forgetting this? If we haven't voted on it, I'm fine with that. I wouldn't do it. I'm just trying to understand the process to make sure we're clear. Because, because if we go one step further on the single tax rate or a split tax rate, 
we've never voted for a split tax rate, but we've always voted exactly. to not have a split tax exactly. rate. Exactly, that's my point. <laughs> so that's where we're coming from. We've always how voted the one, but we have not voted the other three. And how many on the board remember this discussion from last year? I do. I do. I remember them talking about it. Yes. I don't. Exactly. I do. I no, we talked about I the split the rate. However, Percentage. last year was my first year here, so we did a lot of stuff in the basement where we yeah. got brought up to speed by other um, by like the, the Neen, consultants yeah. for the water and sewer and, and some of these people, so I don't I don't quite remember if, if I voted for it here or if, oh. if it was just something we, we went over absolutely <laughs> voted for the split tax rate and we turned it down, which we've done every year for the ten years of nine years I've been doing this. We did not vote on an open space discount or any other kind of rate for open space. I'll put all the bag of candy on the on on the table in a bag. bag There's no minutes that show that vote yeah. through the chair. I am against gambling. <laughs> Even if it's candy. Okay, we gotta move along. Okay, we gotta move along. Yeah. Okay, uh, Mr. Yes. Chairman, um, to clarify, um, not quite sure how to explain it. If you take one thing, residential exemption. Uh, right. A residential exemption would be a dollar amount which would come off the property value before that property is taxed. But you are required as a board to make a formal vote for each one of these. You may not remember doing it, and even though you haven't granted a small commercial exemption or an open space discount or a residential exemption, you need to not only vote whether you will have a single rate or a split rate, you need to take a motion and a second and a formal vote on whether you will or will not grant an open space space discount, a small residential exemption, and a small commercial exemption. Okay, you ready for this? Yes. Mm -hmm. Last year I was the chair, okay? I just ran off for 10 minutes telling you how we never voted on this stuff, okay? <laughs> Mr. Herr, Ms. Wright, and Mr. Catino stated they support a single tax rate. Mr. Ted Stone stated he would support a split tax rate if the commercial tax base percentage was higher. Mr. Ha Mr. Herr asked for a motion to grant an open space exemption, and there was no motion. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Herr asked for a motion to grant a residential exemption, and there was no motion. Mr. Herr asked for a motion to grant a small commercial exemption, and there was no motion. So it was moved by Mr. Catino and seconded by Mrs. Wright to approve a single tax rate. So, I was wrong, you were right, but I was kind of right because we didn't vote for that. <laughs> Thank you for your indulgence, everybody. I am never right. You are always right. So I, I have a, a question yeah. uh, for the chair. Yes. <laughs> um, at what point does it make? At, at what percentage is the is the um, kind of the make or break of commercial to residential, where it would support a dual tax rate? That's, that's a very difficult question because different towns will look at it differently, and it'll depend on the kind of commercial and industrial you have, but. 84, 16% uh, commercial industrial, really. No, I big. understand that, but is it 50 50? Is it 60 40? It's up to, Not the, that it's we're up ever to the Board of Selectmen in each town. It's, it's your own judgment. Have, have it's your own judgment call. Okay. I mean, you, you, can see that, you can see that you need to raise five commercial dollars to lower one residential dollar right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, what's it worth to you is when it gets to be, you know, Three to one or two to one yeah, is yeah. that worth it to you to irritate the commercial business a little bit? Um, you know, or does it have to be one to one? You know, I mean, it's all your own judgment. All right. If I might add a comment, um, it it is really up to the individual communities, but communities generally start to discuss it when they are somewhere around a 20 or a 70 30 split. Mm -hmm. But it, it can be it can be any percentage. Yep. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. So, the chair will entertain a motion for an open space discount. Uh, <laughs> well, Mr. Chair, yes. do we have to get through our questions and comments? Oh, okay. Public right. questions and comments, time. close Absolutely. the hearing, right. and then. No, well, no, actually, yeah, no, we, we're going to keep the hearing open for, for okay. because we need the uh, That's right. five. Yeah. But we can, we can still vote the other four but after we get from the public. Yeah, but not while we're in hearing. We can, we can. So, is there anybody from the public that has any questions? Yes. Can, can we go through? Oh, I thought you already. Uh, you, you, were, you thought you already asked. Yeah. So I was questions. piggybacking on Mr. Hurst. Oh, well, that's so it. I, I yield my time. I'm, <laughs> I'm dug a deep enough hole over here. I'm good. <laughs> 
So I understand our new growth and uh, you know how it's apportioned for uh, single family residential condos and all of that. I'm looking at the personal property growth for 2018, and I see that uh, the growth is 30 percent. How did it get to be that high? What's what's that a, a result of? Uh, this is not in the PowerPoint, but this is a list of the top 10 personal property accounts. Uh, Hopkinton, uh, and this, this is not their total personal property or real estate value. This is just their personal property bulk growth um, in the last fiscal year. So Hopkinton LNG was $17.5 million. Um, NSTAR Gas was $4.5 million. A company called Isalon Systems uh, was $2.9. <coughs> NSTAR Electric was $2.7. Uh, Hopkinton Retirement Residences, uh, which came online with their personal property for the first time, was 1.8 million. Uh, another company called Data Domain was 1.6, uh, and then the, re the remaining four are 900, 700, 600, and, and 500 thousand dollars. So, so those those ten yeah. out of about 400 personal property accounts uh, accounted for 33 of the 37 million in personal property growth. So that's why the percentage change okay. in personal property over this last year was so high. Okay, thank you. Uh, one other, really more of a comment than a question, as I'm looking at um, the average, let's see, yeah, the average single family assessment. Um, you know, I just wanted to point out that as we're looking at our, at our taxes, uh, you know, we all know that we've, as a Board of Selectmen, over the last decade, we've done everything we could and, and successfully, I might add, to uh, keep the increases uh, of the operating budget to lower than a 2.5% two, two increase on the tax hit to the taxpayers. So we wouldn't have to go into any type of override situation or anything like that. Nonetheless, when we look at the average tax bill uh, to our homeowners, we do see that in the past year it's been a 4% increase. So I just want to point out to the public that we can do what we can about the operating budget. But then when we start having these other special purchases and projects, whether it's purchases of land or building buildings and things of that nature, that starts adding up onto our tax bills. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I think it's, I think it's always uh, incredibly tempting uh, and I, I, won't, I won't say easy, but when we're at town meeting to be looking at these various projects kind of in a vacuum and saying, sure, that sounds like a great idea and the town would definitely be a better place, you know, if we do X, Y, or Z, you know, let's go with it. But it does have its impact and we do end up having to pay for it eventually. And so when we start looking at our tax trends, uh, you know, I, I would bet that when we look at these areas compared to other towns, ours are increasing a little bit more despite the fact that we keep our operating budget at less than a 2.5% increase. That was just making a comment. I like that. Thank you. Ms. Wright. Good. I'm good. Stop. No. I yield my time. Excellent. <laughs> As I might. Now I'd like to Chairman open up. Chairman Emeritus took mine. No, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll open up to the public. Does anybody for the public want to come up and ask any questions to, our, to the board or to the assessors? Come on Good up. evening. Uh, my name is Dan Marrero, and I'm here representing Dell EMC. I'm the facility finance director there, and I'm here representing and asking that the board that we keep the single tax rate. As you can see, if we were to go to a dual tax rate, uh, it really will be putting a lot of the burden on Dell EMC as we're three times the next uh, tax assessed value here. You know, 154 million versus the next 57 million dollars. So I ask the uh, board to please rule and vote on a single tax rate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else from the uh, public want to come up and say something, ask a question? Seeing none. The chair would obtain a motion to close the public hearing. I don't no. think we can. Okay. I'm not going to close the public hearing. Okay, can we, we vote, vote now? N no. Okay. Can we say thank you and move on to the next item? So we're not going to do open space and do any of them? We're doing no, all at once? I, I believe the board should keep the hearing open um, okay. to, so that you're able to 
receive the additional information and at that point the board can decide okay to so i move that we continue the public hearing to december next meeting is december fifth yeah. so moved second no need for a vote the board can simply announce okay. the hearing has been continued to december fifth okay, okay. continue public comment to december fifth will the uh, will the la5 be done at that point okay. we believe so okay Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for the PowerPoint and thanks for the, the, the uh, <coughs> eloquent Mr. description. Mr. Chair, in deference to the individual that arrived from EMC this evening, do we see any reason why he would need to come back at that next hearing? I, th I think it's considering uh, considering the way it's been for the last uh, few decades. I think we're going to be all set. We'll be all set. <laughs> Thank you. Without. I wish we weren't polite. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, I just don't want to see him waste his time. So. Yeah. Um, okay, common victual is uh, change of manager, bittersweet. The board says we consider a common victual license uh, change in manager from bittersweet bakery uh, from Hope Helen uh, Helberg to the new motor, Mr. Dunn. Um, Dunn and Olivia, uh, Oliveria LLC, LLC, Deep Doing Business is bittersweet. I was operation week Tuesday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. A request for an entertainment license has been placed on hold, pending action on an application to the Board of Appeals for a special permit for lying for entertainment in the downtown business district. Welcome. Hello, Governor. How are you? Okay, so. I see you. How are you? I'm well. Everybody. What do you got for us? Um, <coughs> well, I'm hoping that you'll approve the change of manager and change of ownership. Uh, we've had a very successful year in a very quiet downtown area. I have driven traffic to the premises in the last 12 months, equivocal to the three years of the previous tenant. So I see that as a great success. Um, we're busy fools. We have, uh, I work 65, 70 hours a week at the shop. Um, and out of my dollar, it's cost me a dollar and two cents. And I'm not here for anybody's sympathy or to tell you that I can't run a business. I run a very, very, very tight ship. I guess a couple of my issues are the cost of labor and the fact that my energy coming into the building is greater, the distribution is greater than the cost of the energy. So I'm in awe. Anyway, all that aside, I need an entertainment license in the future and I also would like to apply for a wine license in the future. That being said, I don't think we can grow the cafe business in the town any greater than we're currently doing. You know, it, it's just, you know, it's, it's exceptional. Um, so I have to get clever about how I'm going to grow the business over the next couple of years. The minimum wage is going up on the 1st of January. Um, for $13 an hour, I get cheap. And that's the truth. And um, I've been up and down to the town probably 18 times last week in the busiest pie season for Thanksgiving one could imagine and I guess you know I've learned a lot but what I've also you know found out is that they'll ask me for information as I've left the office um, and each department asked me for different information that one department already has and I was wondering could we get one package sent out to the business with all the requirements in it for each of and everything they need and can we have it so we can send it all back to one person and they can give it to each department? Because quite frankly, I'm working around the clock as it is and I probably had 15 emails backwards and forwards last week for information that was already up in number 80 South Street. And quite frankly, I can't do any more. So um, I'm here to stay. I hope You're gonna have to go to a different meeting with yeah. a different group for that. Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm hoping that you're happy with what we're doing. Um, I think it was the library opening and hopefully with the town going back into their old offices we'll see some more business downtown but y you know it's tough being a small business owner in the town um, and, and I think that you, you know we can only you know strive to improve the downtown area I guess. Excellent. Mr. Hart. So I'm a little confused CJ. Um, so are you selling the business? Well, I'm not going to be a busy fool, and that's going to be honest with you. I put a year in, we take, take the revenue of 58%. Um, if I can't grow it any further, I'm not going to work for nothing. 
and quite frankly I run a very tight ship of 25 years in the industry and I can't make a shilling on that dollar as it stands today as a cafe. Right. You know, I find out during the week I need an entertainment license for a storytelling event. People standing up and telling life stories and the paperwork and, and all that goes with it. I, I, just, I was in awe. So we can come to that in a minute, but let me get through the, just the, the basics of the application. Mm -hmm. So the request before us tonight is to have a change of manager mm -hmm. at the establishment with the license, with the common vicular license. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna go from Hope Helberg. Mm -hmm. Okay, is Hope a person? Hope is a person, yeah, okay. yeah it's still a part of it there. And to a new owner, mm -hmm. Kieran Doom. That's me. That's oh. you. Okay, so that's yeah. a C of C. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm figuring it out. Okay, so you're still in. I am. And yeah. you're getting it from somebody else and tying it all to you. And then the manager is going to be who? You? Me. So you're not you're not shown as the manager on the current license. Okay. All right. So was Hope a partner before or? No. So so you know Hope um, wanted out of the business. The landlord wouldn't allow her out of the business, so I made a partner to keep her in. Got it. And now you're taking that fully on mm -hmm. yourself going forward. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I understand that. And you're going to be the person. Okay, so I'm good with that piece of the puzzle, but I'd like to come back if we can to talk about some <coughs> of these concerns. Okay. This is sorry. I don't have any questions. Ms. Wright. Um, I confess I missed <coughs> the first part of uh, Mr. Dunn's comments, but like to hear what others have to say. So I've been in to this place more than a couple of times and uh, CJ has always been very welcoming. He does a great job and uh, I like to see, I mean there's obviously there's competition. There's competition right across the street from you mm -hmm. and I think that you're killing it there and uh, I hope that you continue to uh, keep doing it and do a good job. We have people at my work that drive from Natick and Framingham sure. to your place to get stuff. So um, your word of mouth business is is being accept is, is exceptional. Thank so you. I'd like I'd like you to stay there and uh, I support you. Thank you. And I always see you work I always see you working very, very hard and, and, and you know to uh, keep up that historical building can't be very can't be easy. No, it was certainly not cheap, that's for sure. Right. Uh, I have one other question. When I was filling in this application for change of manager, they asked me to put down the opening hours, the operating hours of the business. So if I want to change those operating hours, in other words, if I want to stay open until 6 p.m., six days a week, do I have to come back here and ask permission of the board to do so? And if so, can I ask why? Um, Mr. Kamalo. I think the <coughs> the answer is yes, you have to come back to the okay. board. And I think that's why in the office, uh, following the, the board's approval of different mm -hmm. um, and, and general hours of operation for businesses in town, we've been encouraging everybody to apply for those hours so that they don't have to come back to the board. So, so yeah. I think where Mr. Kamala is going is, you can say that your hours of operation are 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. and then in practice you can be open at 9 okay. a.m. and close at 4. So that was made very unclear to me and that's why I asked the question. So then I'd like to change those operating hours because as a small business owner I feel like I should be able to stay open for as late or as early as I want and right. uh, you know as long as I'm trying to build a business I think that's the way forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So can we do that through a motion tonight? Is part of the motion to approve the change of manager? What are the hours that you'd like to suggest? Yeah. What? Well, <coughs> you'd, you know, if I were you guys, I'd be wrapping my arms around the small business owner and whatever he wants to open the business to make that dollar in, we shouldn't have to come here to ask permission to do so, and that's just how I feel. I know there's a process, and I respect process. I think it's very important. However, y you know, we should be able to just open our doors and close our doors and change as the needs and the demands of the town um, you know, expand and contract really. And I just found the whole thing quite fascinating so to, when I was asked to put the to Just down. to give you some background, in the last year or so, um, not really relevant to, to your particular situation right now, uh, one of the things we reviewed was our alcohol serving uh, licenses and hours. 
and they were all over the place on the licenses and it was really based on what people requested sure. and we would approve what they requested typically as long as it was within state law and what we wanted to do was standardize this uh, one of the reasons being was for law enforcement so that if law enforcement's going by someplace and they see the lights on after you know 1230 then they know okay that shouldn't be you know sure. let's let's go in and see what's going on um, you know in terms of in terms of a, a business such as your own um, certainly while you're not serving booze right now uh, booze alcohol um, I wouldn't anticipate you know that the hour restrictions would be you know nearly what they are sure. for the alcohol establishments uh, mm -hmm. you know one could make the same argument in saying well you know if you see the lights on you know before 530 in the morning then you know maybe the police should take notice but then you're a baker mm -hmm. <laughs> at 5 a.m. so nah, yeah right. yeah so yeah. Uh, you know there's, so there's always that exception to the rule so um, I agree with you you know in terms of in terms of giving you the flexibility to open yeah. when you can uh, you know and I'm sure the board uh, for a situation like yours would be looking at the same thing as long as it's within the law that, sure. that we're able to apply uh, you know okay. I wouldn't see any issue thank you so what are our current bylaw hours now for a common victory license so if we had a 5 a.m. to 8 p.m. Sure. That's inside our bylaw, right? Whatever that is. If it's nothing, that's fine too. It's inside mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Would yeah, 5 a.m. to 8 p.m. work? Sure. Does that give you the flexibility? Yeah. You can open at 7 and you can close at 3, with yeah. whatever. Yeah. Go ahead. I, just to be clear, he had asked for 9 p.m. Yeah, this is why eight. Yeah, why eight? Same, same <laughs> I mean, he doesn't okay. have to be I'll, open. I'll go to midnight. I don't care. I'm just trying to work <laughs> around. Just broaden it. You got midnight. Just <laughs> <laughs> fine. broaden it as much as you need, and then he can pick what he wants. Yeah, I would. Yeah. I would think that right now we would take it at least to the limit of alcohol sales. Um, you know, CJ's indicated that at some point he plans to apply for uh, a license to sell alcohol and as I, well and I believe that's you know, 1 a.m. we don't we don't know if that'll be approved or not but at least it'll set up the structure so that there's one less thing that mm -hmm. needs to be changed uh, okay. when that's addressed so that would be 5 a.m. to 1 a.m. 5 a.m. to 1 a.m. for a common victory license it's fine with me that's yeah. Eastern Standard Time <laughs> <laughs> Sister Kamala, Mr. Kamala, CJ, how much is a shilling? Do you see? You said something about a shilling. We're doing something like that right now. Quarter. <laughs> no, it's a bit it's because it's a bakery. Yeah. I'm yes. sorry. No, because it is a bakery. Right. Yeah. Right. I, I, I can see somebody wanting to pick up something at 5 a.m. for their coffee or tea. Okay. So right. I remember being in a, in a um, mm -hmm. pub in uh, in the UK and seeing a sign that said, "In due time, the government worked with utmost haste." Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know, you know, and that's just you know. Sometimes it's just you know, some forms you just got to fill out and yeah, it works. It. It's not the registry. Sure, we're, we're definitely we better service than the registry. Bring them to the Department of Redundancy Department. Yes. <coughs> and so bittersweet is your marketing name. That's yeah. the DBA piece. That's yeah, the yeah. sales piece, yeah. right? The 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 corporation, the LLC, is mm -hmm. Dune and Oliveira. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, and and the, just going back to one of the points from earlier, um, the storytelling. I went and asked the uh, town, could I, you know, have the piece from the Bible that says, what defines entertainment? And is somebody standing up in a cafe telling a story for 20 minutes, does it need an entertainment license? And the reply I got was, yes. And I said, well, can I see that in writing somewhere, what, what, what tells me that, that <coughs> I need an entertainment license for that? They weren't able to reduce it. So I guess that's something that we need to look at. Um, but I have to spend the money, go through the process, and get approval for it. Um, I am baffled. We're talking about one night a week, one night a month, where people literally come in, have a cup of coffee, a cookie. Um, it's a packed house, you know. Um, and the fact that I have to go through a process for an entertainment license for that, you know, if it was live music or with any of those other things, I get it. But I asked them to define it and they couldn't. And I just found that really odd. 
Well, we also have entertainment licenses for mm -hmm. just televisions and, yeah, and music yeah. and stuff. So you know, it's it just the it, mm -hmm. I, I believe just the process. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that so things are, are controlled. Okay. So, Mr. Chair, I will move that the Board of Selectmen approve the change of manager for Dune and Oliveira LLC uh, to Kiron Dune and to adjust and modify the license hours to be valid from 5 a.m. to 1 a.m. daily. I will second that. Okay, any further discussion? With yeah. the emphasis on Tuesday nights when we have selectmen's meetings, stay open a little later yeah, so we can come and get a coffee. I need someone to be there for it. And for the record, it's done. It's a secretary. Done. 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 Do you have any? Go ahead. Done. Thank you. What a done can't do can't be done. Thanks for your time. Oh, well, <laughs> we, have, we haven't voted yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, all those in favor, say aye. Say aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? <laughs> motion carries. Okay, that was fun. All right, we have to definitely look at our bylaws, though, just to make sure that maybe we do have some redundancy that we can take a look at. Maybe to Zach or something. Okay. So, so, but, but what he was yeah. describing there is basically like poetry reading. Yeah. So for oh. someone to do poetry reading, they need to have a license okay. to do this. Well, we, 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 just, we just talked about you know, the, the last one about televisions and, and, and radio. And we, we, but that's we just different. If someone did poetry reading, that would be considered entertainment. If I read poetry, no one would be entertained. No, they would be very bored. So why would that? That just is nonsensical to me. But yeah. I can tell a story that will entertain people. But no, but to you need to have a point. license. This to tell is a story. like getting out of control. Okay. All right, I, I, okay. that just seems I'm that just seems could, like could, re way regulated. Yes. Yeah, I understand. If I understand that when we get to a point of amplification then maybe you know there needs to be some type of discussion uh, you know just because there can be disturbance in the area and I think that that's probably where this is coming from as opposed to somebody standing on a soapbox you know over in the corner and saying you know let me tell you let me tell you a story about when I was a kid um, it is ridiculous don't get me wrong I think it's ridiculous but I think that where the line is probably drawn in the bylaws, and I say probably because I haven't read them, is when you start getting into amplification and that type so of thing. So why can't we address that before town meeting this year? In fact, in fact, later tonight you'll have the opportunity to do so under the entertainment and amusement license. There's a definition of live entertainment. Perfect. Okay. So you got your wish. Yes. I just wanted to make a comment. Um, He's Irish, and like <laughs> we Irish assume you go we get together you and play a few tunes with no no amplification and nothing at Cornell's, and we couldn't. So I think maybe he's heard that, and you know, I mean that that is that's what they do. <laughs> it's not a I, I'm not getting, I, I'm going to stay out of racial yeah. stuff, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Let's just, let's just racial. Keep Irish is not a racial. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So, so well, I. They do music and they do poetry and they do uh, entertainment that, like, you know, you put in a card and if you want to get up and do something, they let you do it. And, and there's nothing. Okay. There's nothing I, that you need okay. to do that as long as you don't have amplification. Okay. Well, I think we can address it later this evening. All righty. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, what's my. We have another change of manager. I don't know how this one's going to go. Okay, Marathon Pizza. <laughs> Come on up. Oh, my. I'll take the first one. This one. Hello. 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 Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Um, so, my name is Pyle, and I am my parent. I'm 18, so I'm uh, my parents. Uh, we kind of owned the establishment together. It was originally a partnership, and due to differences, they decided to part ways. And now my dad is the sole owner of um, the corporation under the DBA name of Marathon Pizza, and I am the manager. Good for you. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. So, so, weren't you guys just here last time, last meeting? Didn't you, is that your dad that was here? I think so, yeah. Okay. So, 
So he's not going to be the manager? You're going to be the manager? No, my dad is Ramu Kanan, but the previous manager, I believe his name was Mamdu. Yeah. Yep, so he decided to leave, and now my dad is taking over, and I am the manager, and he's the owner. So that guy who came in here last meeting decided to leave in two weeks? Yeah. Shady. Okay. So just walking through the application real quick. Um, so we have it's a request for a change of manager for United Food Business to DBA Marathon Pizza, but United Food is the corporation. And Mam Mamdou Abdallah mm -hmm. was the manager. Yes. And that's your father. No, no. that's the that other person. That that two weeks the ago. other person, and that person is gone. And so now you're going to be the manager going forward. Yes. Okay. And the owner of United Food Business Inc. Who who owns United Food Business Inc. Ramu Kanan. Is that your father? Yes, that's my so father. So that's their father is this one and the same as, as the company, correct? Yes. Are there any other people that own the company? Not as of right now, no. Okay. It's just him. He's the sole owner. Got it. And then you'll be the manager and you're eighteen years of age mm -hmm. or more? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm good, thank you. So are you, is your name Payal Murphy? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. All right. So nothing else has changed. Nothing else has changed. Just a different family. Just a different manager, yeah. Okay. And how are the hours of operation going for you, okay? <laughs> it's the same. 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Sunday. And you're good with those hours? We are. <laughs> Okay, and no entertainment licenses or no. any of that kind of stuff. Okay, all right. Does anyone speak in the restaurant? <laughs> no. God forbid anyone speaks. <laughs> no soapbox. No soapbox. Keep all the politicians out of there. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, I, I just uh, <laughs> I mean, there's no there's no alcohol license at this premises, so I just see this as really a routine yeah. matter, and exactly. I don't know what any of this. So How many of it can affect us or anybody else? So. Right. So the chair will entertain a motion to, uh, for a change of manner from, from Mamdu to Payel. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstained? Passes. Aye. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations. Good night. Okay. Next is an all alcohol beverages club license change of manager. Oh my goodness, and, and uh, entertainment license to the Woodville Rod and Gun Club. What is that entertainment license from uh, Stephanie Gardner to Kimberly Cock? This should be easy. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Welcome. So you saw two others already, huh? So you're, yes. doing, you're doing entertainment also, huh? Oh. Yes, okay. we do. <laughs> but Mr. Hurt, well you, the license. Mr. Hurt, you want to start this one off? So let's just want to figure out who's who. So tonight we have I'm with Kimberly. us. Hi, Kimberly. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Good. And Stephanie's not with us this evening, correct? No. Okay. And how long have you been the man? Or no? How long was Stephanie the manager? Three years. Three years. Okay. And. Um, do you want to do the manager first and then the entertainment piece, or do you want to do it all together? Uh, well, we've been doing it all together, and I think we, because we can, we can, we're going to look at, we're going to look at entertainment later on anyway. So we, this it could end up being a moot point. This is an existing entertainment license. No, I understand, but if we change the, yeah. if we end up changing the entire bylaw, and I'll tell you, there are some stories down there. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm uh, just trying to understand why is the entertainment license as part of the action or the description of the action? Do we need to get into the entertainment license for some reason, or is that secondary? The only thing I had contacted Maria about was originally when I filled out the form, I put closing times of 11 p.m. for all the days we're open, mm -hmm. which was incorrect. I wanted Friday and Saturday to be 1 p.m. 1 a.m. 1 a.m. Sorry, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, here we go. It's not as easy as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> it never is. So she was supposed to send you a change. Okay. 
entertainment. Right. Okay. 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 But the entertainment license itself, Mr. <coughs> Chair, is not. Right. That just seems like it's got changed. No, because it's changed. changed. Right. That's existing. interesting. Okay. So we're just, we're just switching the name on the license. That's the only change. Correct. Okay. And, uh, and, and it was and a previous and manager from yes. 2007. And fixing the hours. And we're fixing the hours. Yeah. Okay. So we'll make that as part of the motion. Okay. okay, any questions, Mr. Sorry. Um, I don't think so. I'm going through. I can see all the TIP certifications. I mean, nothing else is changing. Um, can you give us just an idea of your background, I guess, uh, prior to this, as it, relates, as it relates to this? I was bar manager at the club from January of 2007 until December of 2013. What club? Same one. Okay. Okay. Oh, so you, so you, know, you know where everything is? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> so is is this because of a, like a, um, where you guys do a vote and change members and things like that, or is this just Steph's oh, Steph, stuff? Steph resigned. Okay. That's part of Okay. So I know, not as a, through a selectman, but as a, as a uh, townsperson that Kim does run a tight ship. She's been very effective down there, and I don't remember any uh, any issues uh, since I've been on the board with, with Woodville. And I know that uh, Kim is uh, Kim takes this position very very seriously, and uh, she'll do a great job. I've had many many dealings with her, all professionally and all um, outstanding. So I uh, I back Kim 100% on this. Excellent. Mr. Chair, I move that the board approve the change of manager uh, for the Woodville Rod and Gun Club uh, license to, from Stephanie Garner to Kimberly A. Clark and to adjust the hours uh, on the license application uh, from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Um, except for Friday and Saturday night once 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. Second. Any further discussion? That's what our standard has been. I, I just forget what we actually our standard is ten a.m. as our standard. Actually, our standard is ten a.m. to one a.m. We, we we need to just make it what the standard is that we approve for everybody. Yeah. Okay, so so then the, the motion would be <laughs> ten to, to approve the change day. and then ten, ten a.m. to one a.m. every day daily daily. Yep. Mr. Kamala, can you? You don't have to be open those hours. Can you that no, she gives you all that flexibility. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay. I don't want to be open I, that many. I, yeah. I'm just asking Mr. Kamala to verify that we have the hours correct. Is it 10 a.m. to 1 a.m.? I believe that's what we did in the, because we had to, it, it, with the one else, we would we moved it two hours. Shouldn't stay open that long yeah. when your husband's not working. <laughs> <laughs> We just had the extension request though for New Year's Eve. It was that extended to um, So what do we need? A vote? No, we're waiting for the just, yeah, just one second. We start verifying the ten AM. Okay. See now why we got a little time here? Like the we entertainment licenses for one radio, two TVs, live and recorded music on occasion. <laughs> that's pretty, yeah. that's kind of random in itself, right? I'm not, I have no issue with it. I'm just, we were mm -hmm. talking about something else earlier. Yeah. So, I, I mean, if we're going to be that right. random with these guys, which runs a great operation, and we can't let other people read poetry, yeah. it's just, it's yeah. just yeah. inconsistent yeah. Yeah. on this entertainment thing yeah. in town. Yes, yeah, Sunday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So I, so I remember what, things. So that's what what they'll, they'll agree to is that 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. Seven yeah. days a week. Seven days a week. Yeah. Daily. That was okay. in your motion. That was on my second. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. How do you vote? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? It passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Sorry, you it wasn't as easy as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we'll oh, oh, get to the others. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good. Hey. If we get, if we have Thank five you. more of these tonight, we might be able to have one smooth. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay, Upper Charles Trail Committee appointment. Uh, the Board of Selectmen consider the appointment of David Rolinski to the Upper Charles Trails Committee as an associate member to fill an unexpired term to expire June 30th, 2019. Welcome. How you doing? <laughs> she wanted to be the Upper Charles. I'm at the trail, and I've used it many times. I like the uh, side trails also. And if there's anything I could do, certainly, in terms of either, I know there's one plaque there that describes the old railway. If they had ideas that I could contribute to, uh, even the use of the other trails, the side trails, I'm not sure if there's any desire for signage, marking, things like that, that I could help with. I would be more than willing to do that. I am tired now, I have some time on my hands, so I could go down there during the day if they want me to strike a tree or something. Even that simple, I'm not quite sure. I wouldn't touch the trees. It is a beautiful trip. It is, it is a great uh, addition to the town. Uh, it's wonderful for biking. I've used it for jogging. I think people use it, and anything I can do to help. I'd like to do that. I did apply for that community. I applied for another one I think you're going to review tonight also. Yep. But uh, that's my reasoning. That's good. I, I love the Upper Charles Trails Committee. We actually yeah. had we had a, a volunteer that does, uh, Mike, that does a lot of the cleanup that was here earlier. Mm -hmm. And he'd love to meet you if you could say okay. that you want to help. Yep. Sure. Um, <coughs> start. Uh, without naming a street number, what is your street? Address or street name, please. Oh, not naming the number is yeah. Glen, Glen Road. Glen Road. Yeah, for lumber. No way near. No way near. Yeah, it's right. Yeah, almost on. I, I bike there. I can bike there. It's a little bit tricky on the 85, but I can bike there. Uh, but I uh, generally uh, have the bike attached to the car when I go down there. But it's a great trail. Beautiful well, I, I, it's a no fruit. I, I think partly where Mr. Hur is going is, is you, you do know that part of that board is tasked with extending that trail and finding Which, um, new locations I'd and uh, it, it has been a, a, a question for the yeah. town um, that we not create conflicts of interest with people who are abutters but nobody knows who's going to be in a butter because we don't know where the trail is going to go but your being on Glen Road is Mouth away from where the upper trails is yeah, supposed to go, no so it's that's not an issue. That's no, not an issue. I don't believe. Okay. Do What's the distance that is re that you're considered? Uh, it's in a butter or within 300 feet, I believe. It's on the other side of the town. Okay. Well, the center trail goes relatively close to Lumber Street. Well, that's true. But not Going 300 feet. Far not, no, no way near that. I didn't know. Nope. Excellent. Um, well, since, since there's nobody else, yep, we've had we've, we've had you in front of the board before, yeah, right? Yes. Last right? The no, oh, yes. Mr. Sonnet. Excuse me. I'm oh. sorry. There's some right behind, behind you. Young fellow behind you. Oh. Eric Sonnet, I'm vice chair of the Upper Charles Trails Committee. I want to support Mr. Rolinski's application for an associate member on our board. They both Thank you. Okay. All right. So we've got a we got a recommendation, David. Okay. Do you have anything? No. I'm I'd like okay. to move to accept Mr. Rolinski as an associate member on the Upper Trail Upper Charles Trails Committee. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. How do you vote? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Passes. Welcome. Okay. Thank you. As soon as Zach is over, I'll get back into coming to Thank some of the meetings. Thank you, David. Okay, next one. Historical Commission appointment. The Board of Selectmen consider an appointment to the Historical Commission for an at-large member with a term to expire June 30th, 2020. Applications were received from Dave Rolinski, Eric Sonnet, Beth Watson, and Christine Remby. Okay. Um, I can't open up my... My not opening. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Kamala, this... I think the last couple of meetings we've had links for these, mm -hmm. and they don't work well because yeah, we don't have we an internet not on the internet here. here. Okay. Here. If we could just get those pages um, put right in the packet, that would be much easier for us. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if this opens up, you can use mine because I've already looked at it all. Oh, 
Can I make a yeah. comment? Yes. I applied for three committees. I've been accepted on two. I don't want to overcommit my own time. And if there are conflicts in the times that these committees meet, and I cannot support three, I wouldn't want to commit to three. Thank and you, I sir. really don't know. Okay, thank you very much yeah. for saying that. So the, I did apply to the historic committee, but it sounds like there are open. several open. other individuals okay. that are interested also. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been accepted on two of the ones that I had applied for, so in deference to those individuals, I would bow out. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank Appreciate you. it. I just want to say a word about Mr. Alinsky, though, because, you know, we've got such great volunteers in this town. I remember Mr. Kamala one time saying Hopkinton was outstanding for the spirit of volunteerism. And I know Dave has recently retired, and he is stepping up. And I just want to say thank you to you, because whether you're a bear for punishment or what, uh, but that, that, that's, that's just the spirit of volunteerism we have in this town, and uh, it, it, it's, just, it's just great to see. So thank you. Excellent. Okay, so um, well, is uh, our, let's see, where are we here? So I want to, and Christine, is Christine here? Christine, come on up. Welcome. Thank you. So you want to be in the Historical Commission? I do. Okay, now I'm sorry, I, I, I you know most of the time when people come up we have information, we can't, or I, at least I can't open mine. Okay. So could you please um, introduce yourself, where do you live, uh, you know, some uh, some background on uh, on why you should be the next, uh, is it a full member or associate member? Full. Yeah. A full, a large member um, of the histor uh, Historical Commission. Sure. Um, I'm a lifelong member of Hopkinton. I went through the school system, as did my parents, aunts and uncles, siblings. Um, I just have a deep love for Hopkinton. And I went on to school in New Orleans, Louisiana, and went to Tulane University and got my major in U.S. History. And I'm currently looking into graduate school to be able to teach, hopefully, in the school system. So I wanted to start to get more involved in the town. And that's what I was looking to do with the historical society. Excellent. It's a real townie. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Mr. Sorry, yes. any questions? I don't have any questions. Thanks for stepping up. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks, yeah. Mr. Hart. The green wave. Love yes. it. Yes. Mr. Ted Stone. All wave. I like Kevin Townies. <laughs> I don't know if I've made that clear or not in the past. But <laughs> Are you one? I, I am one, yeah. I just barely am. Am I one? She forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Put that accent. See you later. Do you, do you live in a historical district in town? I don't, no. Um, my grandmother's house, I believe, could be. Is that on Hayden Road? Um, on Ash Street. Okay. Yep, I live on Catherine Drive, actually right near Center School. So. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you very much thank for coming. Thanks. So is um, Beth Watson here? Welcome, Beth. Hello. Thank you. And I'll say the same thing. I'm yeah. sorry. We know nothing about you. Okay. So could you? <laughs> um, well, I have an uh, undergrad in history and a master's in historic preservation. Um, I moved here two years ago on Thanksgiving from Atlanta, and I live on Hayden Row in a historic house. Um, and obviously <laughs> I love history um, that's like my obsession and I as soon as I moved into town wanted to really start to get involved um, with the preservation community here um, once I felt like I had finally moved in because it, it took forever to get everything uh, done um, I started inquiring <coughs> and someone actually mentioned this to me um, and said, I think that this would be a good idea for you. And um, I have, I'm a stay at home mom. Um, I don't work. So I have a lot of time on my hands. <laughs> so. um, if we ask questions, can we loop around and ask the same questions of all Absolutely. candidates, even though? Absolutely. Can you give me an idea of um, your ideas around what makes what makes something historically significant? Um, I'm a firm believer in that uh, 
it's not just about the famous people, um, but telling the story about all types of people um, in, the, in history. Um, I think in this town, coming from Georgia where there's not a lot of standing history um, anywhere, um, I am constantly amazed at how much is here. And there are a lot of, like take Hayden Road for example, there's you know old mill houses and um, that's not your fancy schmancy kind of thing, but it does tell a story about the average person in the past. And I think that that's very interesting to me and that's important to me to preserve and to tell the story of. I mean the other, you know, my house had a JFK stay at, at my house and so that's kind of a fancy schmancy person. How about Washington? Uh, not Washington, <laughs> not Washington, just JFK. Um, no, but I think down the street in the historic district, that house that's up for sale right now at Washington. But, you know, I also think it's important to tell the story of uh, the average person in town. Okay, so. thank you. So the historic commission, and I want to make sure I'm thinking about the right committee here because these get confusing sometimes. The historical commission is for the historic district no. oversight? No, no that's, that's the historic one. district commission. Historic, historic, historic district even. Historic resources throughout the town. Historical commission is for resources throughout the town, Correct. and historic district is the district. Just the district center. Yes. And I also applied for the historic district commission. I haven't heard back yet as to when to meet with you about that. I applied for both. Do we have an opening on the historic district commission? We do. Okay, and how, many, how, how long have we been seeking applicants for that? It's a while now, and uh, it's going to be on the agenda next uh, for the board's next meeting. Do we have Do we have applicants for that one? So I'm just one of them. I know, <laughs> but do we have other applicants? Sorry, do we have other applicants for that one? I, I don't. Oh. We don't. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, I'm good. Thanks. So, <coughs> piggybacking off of that, if you had to choose one of these committees. Is there one that you would uh, be more interested in than the other? They're both really interesting to me, if I'm being honest. Um, I, I, I mean, if I was going to have to pick, I would say the Historic District Commission because I went to that meeting last week, mm -hmm. and so I feel more familiar with it. I also have written a uh, historic National Register Historic District nomination for a, a city before, um, so I have a lot of background in that. Uh, Good. But, I mean... Everything is interesting to me. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Do you, you, you have anything? Um, well, I served on the Historical Commission for over 20 years. <laughs> Way too long. Thank um, you. And, you know, I, I just think we, it's great that suddenly we've got all these volunteers and you've got someone like Dave who's new to volunteering who's just willing to serve on all kinds of stuff. We've got, uh, you know, Mr. Sonnet who has stepped up to every single need this town has ever had. He's occupied the chair at this chairs at this table, uh, including serving as the chairman. Uh, Christine is a lifelong Hopkinton res resident. I mean, it, it's just a wealth of resources. Um, but I, but looking over Beth's qualifications. Um, I will tell you that in the years that I was on the commission, um, there have been very few chances to have a person that actually had a degree in historic preservation. Um, and, and where that is very important is that some of the things that the Historical Commission is called on to do, um, in particular one of the most common things is deciding on um, teardown requests, demolition delay requests, and being able to go in and look at the building, understand what you're seeing, understand the construction, um, make a, an educated recommendation based on what the potential to salvage this building really is. And those decisions can be particularly um, sensitive with the property owner because they sometimes feel that the board is simply arbitrary, that they're acting out of simple emotion. And um, it, it's, it, 
adds weight to the work of the board if there can be someone helping in that decision who has some professional training in that field. Um, we have a historic signage project that hasn't been addressed because people need to do the research for the properties. Um, the town owns the McFarland Sanger House on Lumber Street, a house from the 1700s, and we have been in probably close to a 10-year conundrum on what to do to salvage and use that house and what's important and what isn't. Um, so there are some very real operational things that the Historical Commission does where um, having professional training in historic preservation would be a huge resource um, and, and would, I believe, lend a level of professionalism um, and credibility to the decisions that that board makes. And I, I have to say I'm sorry to see uh, the number of applicants that suddenly want to join this board because they've been, they've gone wanting for a while. Um, but I, personally, I, I was just delighted um, at the opportunity to see a person with a degree in historic preservation um, perhaps be able to join that board. So I don't have questions um, as much as just uh, my own feelings based on what I've seen and uh, the expertise that I think Beth could probably bring to the board. So, so I understand that uh, uh, this particular position is more overarching across the town, and it would be the group that takes into uh, under discussion things like the the silo on the old Terry property, the HCA building, right? When we were discussing that, as opposed to <laughs> as opposed to historic district commission, which is the downtown historic district. Um, different types of discussions, or is it just more focused on just the center of town for HDC? The Historic District Commission only gets together if there's an application presented to it for some change to one of the properties that's in the protected district. The Historical Commission deals with all issues of promoting history, protecting history, um, raising the public awareness and education of town history. Um, there's a grant right now we've received to, um, I believe, expand and uh, go into greater detail on documenting our historic properties within the town, a grant that came from Mass Historic and it's been supplemented with CPC. Um, that's the kind of work that the Historical Commission would, would work on documenting those properties mm -hmm. or marking historic sites or making the decision on a demolition delay deciding how to deal with the historic property, anything to do with preserving, promoting, protecting what we consider our town history. Mm -hmm. So there's so if there is a historic property that's outside the historic district commission and the people who own that property want to make some change, do they have to go to the historic commission for permission? If the property is outside of the historic district and there's only about 13 properties in the district. If they own a historic property that's not in the protected district, unless they want to demolish it, they do not. Okay. The, dis the historical commission comes in if, they, if the property is 75 years or older and they pull a permit for demolition. Mm -hmm. Then the historical commission has to assess the property, choose to hold a public hearing, make a ruling as to whether it's considered historically significant to the town, whether it's salvageable. Okay. So they have a much broader um, broader scope of activities than the Historic District Commission does. Okay. So, you. Uh, so a house built in the 40s is considered historical now? Well, you know, when you pick 70 to 75, okay. that keeps changing, Actually, doesn't it? You're historical pretty soon. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, exactly. So we're all, okay. Exactly. We're we're almost all of us. I have a little hard, a bit of a hard time with that myself. Wow. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Mr. Sonnet. Now, now we, we, as I said to everybody else, we, you can't come up so we know nothing about you. Who are you again? <laughs> Could you uh, please come up and explain to the board uh, 
why you'd like to be on the historical commission and uh, and, and no, Mr. Sestari, if you could afterwards, could you ask him your question again? Well, let me uh, introduce myself to the rest of the town watching on television. I've been a volunteer in this town for over 20 years. I've served on more boards. I can't even remember all the ones I've served on. Earlier, you said that I have always stepped forward to fill an opening that needed filled. Recently, at a community preservation committee meeting, uh, in the audience, I asked the chairman of the Historic District Commission who his representative was on the uh, CPC committee. Uh, Mike Rowan said, I don't have one. I can't find anybody to do it. That triggered my thought process of when I was on the Community Preservation Committee and led the charge to fund the restoration of the town fountain and got the funding approved for that and led the charge on the board to rehabilitate the bridge over the Sudbury River and we got the funding for that. And the thought that there was no historic person on the CPC I found to be uh, very unsettling because very much of what CPC does is fund historical restorations. So I said to Mike, I said, well, I'll, you know, have your committee appoint me and I'll be more than happy to do it. And he said, that would be great. Would you serve on the committee also? Because I don't have an opening. And I said, absolutely, I, you know, I'm not, I've always been a historic kind of person anyway. Um, I don't have a degree in history, but I had a specialization. I, I uh, majored in economics, but my specialty was economic history of the Industrial Revolution in the various countries and the, how it happened. And I've spent my whole life being a history buff. The only thing I can recommend to you is I'm very impressed with the people who have come forward. I'm more than willing to step aside uh, from serving on the commission itself, but I would certainly appreciate your support if the commission asked you to appoint me to CPC as their representative. So I'll leave that decision to you, but quite frankly, uh, Serving on the commission, well, I think it would be uh, uh, something I could do and be very, uh, do very well for you, the committee and the town. I would relinquish my application there if you would consider me for the, uh, for their uh, community preservation seat. Thank you, for, thank you very much. <clears throat> I think that's up to the, probably the chair of the, uh, Historical Commission to, to appoint you, so I don't think that's the same thing that, that we right, would do, well, but then if he's... I don't... Uh, to, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. There is no uh, criteria that the person has to be on the committee that they appoint. I don't believe there is. But we can Mr. So, a uh, couple of thoughts. Um, in Mr. Sonnet's comments, he mentioned Mike from the historic, he, was, he said Historic District he Commission. Meant historic. Okay, so I meant Historic Commission. Yeah. Historic Commission, yeah. okay, so we'll be cl we're clear on that. Uh, two, um, my sense is it wouldn't be the chair that makes the appointment to the CPC from the Historical Commission. It would be the Historical Commission that makes the appointment to the CPC. I don't know what their bylaws or what their charge is as a committee in terms of how who, what the qualifications are of that appointment, whether it has to be a sitting member or it can be somebody else. But I also don't think that the board, this board, can weigh in on that decision. Right. I think we'd be overstepping our bounds to tell them how they're gonna appoint somebody. So I'm a little, I'm not as um, convinced that's the best path to follow here, um, but I'm certainly open to have more dialogue about it. Um, I think we have some great applicants tonight. All three would be perfect. Um, and I think we have opportunities for all three in town government that would fit their interests very well. Maybe we haven't figured it all out just yet tonight, but I do think we could sort through this fairly easily. Can I just 
add one thing. Um, this is, hasn't come up before on that board. It's always been a seven-person board. I see it. But in the, uh, what is this document that you sent us, Mr. Kamal? I guess it describes the, the, the administration of the government, historical commission establishing powers and duties. There is a phrase that says, alternate members may be appointed in like manner as provided for in this section, not exceeding in number the principal members. So you, it, there's a seven-person board, so you can't have more than seven alternates. In the case of the absence or inability to act on the part of a principal member, the place of the principal member shall be taken by an alternate member designated by the chairman. So I am wondering, now I don't know whether the alternate could be the CPC rep. Um, as, as I said earlier, in terms of voting on on some of the issues that come to the Historical Commission, I have to say I feel very strongly that Beth Watson's historic preservation background would be a valuable resource, but it would be great with Mr. Sonnets, particularly his understanding of CPC. I would love to see him on that board for that purpose. Um, I'm thinking two things. Could he be the alternate if he could take the CPC seat, number one, and I, and I will make another, um, just kind of fill in it, everyone in. One of the existing members on that board, um, their home is for sale and they will be moving out of town. On which so board? On the Historical Commission. So there will be another full seat opening up. Um, so some movement could take place, but I, I'm thinking maybe this alternate member it would be a good solution to uh, get a twofer here. Well, I think we can get a, if I may, I think we could get a threefer, put two alternates and, well, and, and, and a, 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 no, a permanent member and, and, and put in two alternates. Two. And, and, um, and then let the, let the chairman decide, like it says right in the charge afterwards. But then that gives us, it gives, gives, it, it gets everybody working, it gives us everything we want. And then, um, you know, then maybe we'll get to see Beth uh, at our next meeting and see if we can impose it on her more. What do you mean, impose upon her? I'm sorry, I'm not following you. It's just a historic also. Oh, well, th yeah, that, that's <laughs> nothing, but I, um. You know, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I see, I see this as a win-win-win. So if we I don't need to worry about the alternate right. uh, positions. I do think that we should make sure that the chair of the historic book commission is aware of that clause. Mm -hmm. So that way that person can decide what they want to do and what that committee wants to do. I think we need to focus on this, realizing some of the other things that might be coming around, realizing that there's an application in for historic district commission we have an applicant who said that her preference would be, I'm sorry, correct me if I'm wrong, you said your preference would be Historic District Commission of the two. To be honest, I was only saying that because I, I felt like I would needed to give it an answer. Okay. Okay. Please, it really wants to be both. Okay. Um, so, you know, we've got some factors that, that we vote on, and then there are some things that you know, are out of our hands to Mr. Hur's point. So let's focus on what we vote on, make sure other people are informed to make other decisions. If I may, through the yes. chain, um, several things to clarify. The Board of Selectmen appoints the alternates. Oh, we do? Yes, yes okay. that's, that's what that, we're that's, that's Thank that's you. number one. Okay. The second issue. The CPC charge clearly states that the member from the Historical Commission has to be a member of the Commission. Okay. What I will need then to, for the Board to decide, and we, I can also discuss this with staff, is whether an alternate for the purposes of CPC, for the CPC charge, qualifies as a member. Okay, so and, and so that and that person that yeah. is appointed yeah. is a full voting member of CPC, correct? Correct. That's what it reads like, but I, I 
just want to clear this with the team as well as with no the appointment is a full yeah. voting member of CPC you're yes. going to clarify yes. if it's yes. that yes. large yes. Exactly. that person okay. yes and yeah. what percentage and what percentage of CPC funds go toward historic uh, 20. Is it 20? 20. I, 20. I thought it was 20 I think it's is it 10 Depends for each year I think it's 10, 10 for each and then each 10 percent with a 10 percent the opportunity for a 10 percent bonus there's a a floating uh, amount of money. Okay. But the it, it's a it's bucket is ten percent. It's bucket is ten percent. Okay. So, Mr. Chair, in, in in light of all this, can I put a draft motion out there for consideration? So I would move that we appoint Christine Remby and Beth Watson to serve as associate members of the. Hockington Historical Commission. I'm sorry. Alternate, alternate members. Yes. What is it? Alternate. Alternate members of the uh, Hockington Historical Commission and Eric Sant to serve as a member of the Hockington Historical Commission. Through the chair, uh, should we ask Mr. Rulinski if he's interested in being an alternate member as well? Because we can have up to seven, right? Up to three alternates. I believe we can have seven. It says no more, yeah, no more than the, the number, so I guess it does can, can, can be up to seven. Less than, it has to be less than seven. I, I only, I did not include him in my yeah. draft motion only because I yeah. heard him say he was kind of so getting spread out a little bit. Right. Okay, so and, I guess and the other logic he was here, we could ask him. I, I, uh, I am well. Uh, the question is, would I be able to? Right, I can't right now tell you if I could if there are conflicting meeting times okay. for these three groups. That's my only reservation. Okay. It isn't that I'm not motivated to what I would like to. Yeah, we don't question it. We certainly don't question your motivation. No. I, I, I just don't know if it's. Okay. There will be meeting at the senior center at the same time. You just can't support three. Yes. And so uh, I realize that we're not supposed to have further conversation until there's either a second or this is dropped. But uh, I'd like to I'd like to call into question our process on this. Um, in the past, when we've had more applicants than there are positions available, we've taken a different process so that we don't get to a position where uh, it's basically the first motion that's made that gets voted on, and any other motions aren't even considered. So I would like us to address that before we address any vote on this motion. Okay. Well, since there is no second, then we can... We haven't really given it a chance for a second, so yeah. I want to be No, I'm, I'm happy to second the motion. Okay. All right. Now let's go to further discussion. Okay. So my discussion would be that we should be having... We should make sure that this process allows... Uh, in the past, we've taken votes, uh, um, essentially straw man votes, so that we can direct ourselves and everybody actually gets a say. Uh, I think in the past, what we did was basically have a blind vote where the ballots were all read off so that the public knows who voted for whom, uh, and then that goes on record, and then we approve uh, or vote against okay. how that is. The, the logic for my motion uh, in terms of the individuals, which I think are awesome in term for, for these roles we're looking at, was to keeping in mind that Beth kind of vocalized an interest in the district next uh, historic district commission, where we have an opportunity, where I think there's a great opportunity for her there, and where Christine is coming into this and getting involved so she can get involved as in learning sort of how it all works. And then we have one person that gets CPC, Board of Selectmen, you, the whole thing, like understands the entire structure of town government. So that was the logic for putting them in the various slots. Um, I think it's a good fit for everybody. Uh, I hope that uh, all would accept that proposal. Uh, and I think it will help people kind of come up to speed and get ready for other uh, responsibilities. Yeah, I think I, think I look at it as, uh, and, and Eric, please take no offense to this, because uh, you've done some fantastic things for the town. But I think that right now we have two people who are stepping forward and trying to volunteer who have a very focused background in what, in what these, well, 
what the Historic Commission and Historic District Commission specialize in. And I think that we should be taking advantage of that because that's their uh, primary responsibility for these. It's not CPC. From there, uh, you know, the, the chair of CPC can pull his or her board and see if they can work something out. We can still uh, uh, assign associates. We hear that, uh, and, and I'm sure it's accurate, but we hear that there will be another position that's opening sometime in the next few months. Uh, so that'll be another opportunity. Uh, but I think that we need to be we need to be primarily concerned with the charge of the historical commission at this point. And we have two applicants with with uh, significant education in that area, and I don't think that that can be ignored. Uh, and have them put on as associates. Now, I, I, looking at uh, what Mr. Hood came up with, I thought was quite logical, because without a, a strong voice at CPC, I don't know if, if the um, Historical Commission would be getting their, their, due, uh, their, their uh, due support. And um, I see this, uh, I see his, um, motion as putting all the horsepower in into the right places that we get uh, j just the way he described it that we have somebody that wants to just start start to serve on on a board and get their expertise we still get beth on get get beth in there with her expertise and then um uh, uh still have the ability to um uh, consider her for um, historic district commission. So we and, and so we get we get the the, the best of, of of the three worlds. So that's why I, that's just the way I saw it. It's that we it's a win win win. If if I may respond to that, Mr. Chair, um, to Mr. Sestari's point, the job of the historical commission is not CPC. The job of the historical commission is all the tasks that they are charged with, um, and I don't quite understand what is meant by a concern that the historical commission not get its due at CPC because as you know the funds there's funds in the historic preservation bucket and they are only used for historic purposes so it's not like unless you you should have an advocate to, to maybe weigh in, weigh in on the different proposals but it's not like those funds can go somewhere else no, other than just door. Uh, but, they, but they haven't had an advocate. No, no, I agree right. with that. And, but and, but and, the, and the, the concern that, right. that, that somebody's not going to get but, their due. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and yeah. If, if they find that their needs aren't being met, then they should be, you know, talking amongst themselves to say, okay, we really need to have somebody who's going to CPC and requesting some of the money. You know, from this well, I think that that's what just happened at that last meeting. That's that's what I, that's what okay. I picked up on. But okay, I just think that I think we need to look at the primary yeah. responsibilities that need to be filled, and we have two highly educated people who specialize in that. And I think that this board would be irresponsible if we don't appoint one of them. That's my bottom line. But I think we're appointing both of them. No, I don't. Uh, associate members don't have a vote there. Right, they're an associate member. Unless Correct. one of the full time. Unless one of the full times, exactly, exactly. I don't think we appoint somebody too historic so that they can sit on CPC. All right. So there's a motion, a second. If I um, may, Mr. Chair, yes. um, the board has an existing procedure for runoff voting. Okay. Therefore, if Mr. Hess motion is to be valid, the board has to suspend that procedure temporarily. I th I, again, there okay, is a procedure that was adopted okay, I think we'll back in, 20, in 2014, I believe, by the board for a runoff election. So where you have more than one kind so of So this is like when we did the planning board in our first meeting, we write down our exactly. name and we vote? yes, yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah. All right, then let's, uh, let's, let's do that. Uh, Post haste, because we've got uh, we still have a lot of things on this agenda. So is that something? Is, is that something, Mr. Suspended. Kamalo, that we need to, uh, I guess, be more prepared for? Just in the simplicity of having ballots in front of us that we can write and turn in, or 
is it something that we should try to handle right now and have this extend another 15 minutes? So, so you're it's saying that my motion is, is out of order? Yes, unless if the board was to vote to suspend that procedure. Because the board accepted a process yeah. for this exact, type, this exact type of situation. And by accepting your motion and voting on it, if we were to move that forward, it would be bypassing that process. Hmm. Who seconded my motion? I did. Now you're culpable as well. <laughs> <laughs> I could pull back my motion. <laughs> I, I, get to pull I could pull back my second. So, well, how do we handle that? We have a motion on the table, right? So, isn't that something? You just no. You just we, we just declare the motion out of order. Yes. I don't think you get to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we get to do that. So, you're saying this process is in place and we've used it before. Can you describe this process, please? Yeah. Holy um, Lord, we're going to be here till midnight. <laughs> yes. Um, Whenever there is, when the board has to hold uh, a runoff vote, uh, the the first step is uh, for a motion to be made, um, asking each of the board members to indicate which candidate they prefer for the position. And then the second step is uh, that each board member state their preference. And if one candidate is preferred by a majority of the board members, then we go to step three. The chair then states uh, that they will entertain a motion to appoint the candidate to the position in question. Uh, and then the motion is made and the board proceeds to vote. If no candidate is preferred by a majority of the board members, but two candidates are preferred by more board members than the others, then the chair states that they will entertain a motion to appoint a candidate to the position of by selecting between and then you name the two candidates. <laughs> I'm having selective memory tonight because I don't yeah. remember that discussion no, either. No, I, I do because that yeah. went on a long time and we yeah. even yeah. we yeah. even managed to poke holes in this process but yeah. we decided yeah. it was the best we could do. The Did most town council approve that process? Yes. Because yes. that sounds somewhat yeah. undemocratic to me. Yeah. Okay. He, he yes. approved it and yes. he said the, the main thing being that uh, if a ballot's taken, it's a straw poll, uh, and that in the end, the board needs to vote on okay, the, so the, the results. Okay, so to follow that process, as I understood what you just read, yeah. then my motion should be modified to nominate Eric Sonnet to, for that straw poll. Is that correct? I think the first step was for it's each person to just go through and discuss who yeah. who I thought it said right up front someone made a motion for one person. No, there's a straw poll first, Brad. Step one. What does it say? Yeah. You ask each of the board members to indicate which candidate they prefer. Okay. So before you make your motion. I will withdraw my motion. I will withdraw my second of the withdrawn motion. Okay. Under so, duress. So is there someone that you prefer? Okay, let's then let's do the straw poll. And just, okay, so is there someone that you prefer for the position? For the full position, Eric Sonnen. Same, Eric Sonnen. Eric Sonnen. Beth Watson. Um, my preference would be to uh, uh, have Beth Watson as well. Okay. So it's the majority. So now the chair will entertain a motion to appoint Eric Sonnet to the um, full voting member term to expire June 30th, 2020. Is that request for a motion in line with Mr. Kamala's? Yes. Yes. Thing. So moved. Second. Discussion. The discussion. Yeah. So uh, my motion, folks, uh, Beth, Christine, has nothing to do with uh, you know your candidacy or your ability to do this job. I think both of you will be wonderful as you get involved in town government. We need you involved, so please. This is a lot of other stuff here that we're working through, um, but I think. Uh, I just don't want you to be put off in any way by this. I was very impressed with your background, to Mr. Sestari's point. Your knowledge is exactly what we need in Hopkinton because we love our community as it is. And we want that historical uh, presence to be maintained for decades to come. So please hang in there with us, and we'll get you great roles where you can really make meaningful contributions. Okay. All right. And um, so we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Yeah, I would just like to say that I, if this goes through and and it's 
it's it's hard to say this without I mean it, it absolutely there's no offense to uh, Mr. Sonnet intended um, although I know that the words may be difficult to accept without him thinking that there is um, but I think that this board is acting irresponsibly if we're not taking this pool of education in this particular area for this position I, I don't even see how it can be considered that we don't take one of these two candidates with uh, with undergrad degrees and a master's degree in this. I mean, this is that's the purpose of this board. It doesn't say in the charge of the board that the person should be, you know, very well versed in the economics of getting money for historic uh, for historic projects and representing themselves on CPC. This is about this is about the historic value. It's not about anything else. Anything else? I just want to add again that the one piece of business that comes to the Historical Commission takes up the most amount of time nowadays are requests for demolition. It's also the most emotional, it's the most controversial, and the ability of that board to render a decision that is well accepted by the public would be very much enhanced if part of that decision entailed a board member who had a, de a master's degree in historic preservation and could bring the weight of that professionalism to that decision. It would <coughs> enhance for the town as a whole the level of professionalism and the impression to those applicants that their property is being decided on with a high degree of knowledge and professionalism. Um, just having been there for as many, many years as I have and seeing the amount of time that goes into those requests, um, I just can't tell you what a value it would be to the weight and the professionalism of those decisions. So I would, I would argue, counter-argue, that the same logic that we apply to the Parks and Rec situation in the Center School the Reuse Committee should apply tonight. That argument was those folks will be at the table, they will have a voice, they will be called upon, they're alternate members, they're not even liaisons, they're going to be alternate members if they so choose to continue down that path, and that expertise will be gushing all over the table. So it's the same logic that this board argued about center school. It's not. You're now arguing against it tonight for it's other not. reasons. It's not. Uh, that, that, you can, you can try to convince yourself of that. But if I'm trying to convince you, not me. No, I'm if, no, you need to convince yourself too, and that's how you do it. But, but if any of you three really care about the, the historic preservation in town, then you go for the person or people who have the background in that. I think you if go it, for the if first you care, if you care about right, If you guys, care guys, about guys. CPC and having somebody on a seat okay. in CPC, then you vote for that person. Right. I care okay. about both. Okay. You're right. Fine. Okay. And, and I, I, I saw, uh, as soon as um, Claire and I both saw the alternate members, and then hearing Claire say that there's going to be another spot open very quickly. I agree that, that the alternate I said members that are a great way to, to no, get there's everybody to another one. To, there'll, there'll be another, there'll be another yeah. spot open. Yeah. Well, that's, that, that, was, that was my, was my yeah. logic. Okay. So. Um, there's, there's a motion and a second. All those in favor of appointing Eric Sonnet, signify saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. No. Any abstentions? Okay, it's 3 2. Okay. So I'd like to make a motion, if I may, Mr. Chair, to appoint um, Ms. Watson and Ms. Remby as uh, alternate members of this historical commission. We have a second. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, how do you vote? Well, sh okay. what? should we see if they're interested oh, in that? <laughs> uh, oh, I thought, would you be, okay, I'm sorry, I just figured that they would. We're putting the cart before the horse at this point, aren't we? Well, we already got a motion and we haven't talked to him about that. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Starry. I, um, Would you want me to? Rem I'll take back the motion. 
Would and I'll take back the second. Okay. Um, ladies, would you be interested in being alternate members of the Historical Commission? Sure. Can I ask a question? Absolutely. Would it prevent your boss from, say, going to that open position when it, if it comes? No, not at all. Yeah. But then you're, you're actually first in It's actually, the way it's written is uh, all members may be appointed in a like manner. Uh, in the case of an absolute inability to act in part of the principal member, the place of the principal member shall be taken by an alternate member designated by the chairman. So, yes. So, hearing that they both would be interested in an alternate position, would somebody, would the, would the challenge, challenge stand a motion to appoint um, Beth Watson and Christine Remby as alternate members of the Historical Commission. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Passes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much for your patience with all of this. Okay. All right, Fire Chief, Police Chief, Town Manager, Performance Evaluations and Goals. So um, I believe we left off with uh, trying to uh, weed down some of our goals for um, the three positions. So Maria, can you walk us through? Sure. Uh, this is just slightly modified based on the last meeting. Um, and some of you pared, pared your longer list down. So hopefully I have accurately represented what each of you wanted for the police chief, fire chief, and town manager. And I believe tonight um, you will vote on your three top goals. Mr. Chair, if I could ask a question, please. So Maria, the ones that you have highlighted are ones that we share that idea with at least one other member? Correct. Not necessarily all members. Correct. Got it. Okay. Mr. Chair, could I suggest that we start with the town manager's sure. goals for FY18? Given yeah, I, think I think it's it a little bit more concise and probably yes, more that. consistent. Okay, so it looks like um, finalized the Main Street Corridor. Yeah. Seems to be one of the uh, main ones in uh, all, almost most all of us. Yep. Um, so I think that that was one that I think that we should put down. Well, yeah, I think that's a good one, but. So when we come up to Mr. Kamalu's or whoever the town manager is at this point next year, um, <laughs> if we come up to his uh, goals and we say, well, Main Street Corridor is not finalized, you think you can wrap this up in a year? <laughs> it's taken 20 years to get us where we're at. <laughs> we're about one-tenth the way there. 25%. Yeah. All right. Sorry. I, I think if, if I may throw the chair, if the focus is on getting the project to the 100% design um, and the specific steps that the town manager should take, I, I, I think it's worth pursuing. Um, however, if the intention is that it be constructed by then, then that will not be possible. Um, 
So I think the, the goal should be to focus on the Main Street Corridor project and have it prepared and ready for construction in FY19. Begin construction in FY19. It's going to be yeah. a two, two or three year project. I'm sure. Yeah, I don't expect it to be. But I think if we have it pre com design completed and ready for construction for FY19 commencement, you know, that would make sense. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So do we have to make a motion to it? I would do all three for each person. Like that's one for, for the town manager. The two for the second for the town manager it looks like it would be, you know, complete town hall renovation uh, or something along those lines. At least a couple of folks have that in here, right? Well, they expand the BAA partnership. There's a couple that's not that one to get highlighted though. Couple of town halls on there. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we're setting three, right? We set three goals, right, Maria? Correct. So then we could do the Main Street corridor, the town hall, and the expand the collaboration of the BAA. I, excuse me, I don't. I only see BAA is missed. I, I see it That's by one one person. Yeah, my mistake, uh, uh, Miss Wright. Um, um, Brendan's did not get highlighted in gray. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. I think it's the town manager's job to get the town, the main quarter, main street quarter project going. I mean, that's I think in the role of the town manager mm -hmm. in general. Mm -hmm. I think it's the town manager's job in general to get the town hall renovation complete so we can get back into town hall or some semblance of whatever it is we're going to do there, but have that going in, in FY18. I don't think expanding collaboration with the BAA is the town manager's job. I, agree. I really don't. I, I think that is perhaps this board's job mm -hmm. or some other entities in town's job, but I don't think that is the chief elected or the chief uh, administrative officer's role in the town of Hopkinton. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what that means in terms of expanding collaboration with the BAA partnership. Well, considering that it's, that it's a large part of um, Hopkinson's identity being um, but why do we have to expand Arizona? it what's wrong with it well it, it's 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 constantly uh, in flux things are changing all the time you know when we're talking about you know the the meetings that uh, that mr. Kamala has been having just going over the, the changes with the uh, with the um, downtown corridor project the um, uh, you know, wanting to know how the, the the school changes and other things like that that are happening. He's he's actually spearheading the uh, communications between the BAA and um, and the town of Hopkinton. Well, I, I I don't see that one as being a town manager's top three goals for FY18. I'm sorry. I think we, you know downtown parking, improving the relationship with the school so we can get better budgets and more accurate workings going on I mean there's all kinds of things that we could be doing but they have the BAA partnership in the top three I just don't see it thank okay. you well we get one so so we with Main Street corridor the second one was uh, the, the town hall okay so we've got two so now we're only talking about a third one so what are we saying for the town hall goal specifically if we measure it how do we know we made it where's where's our meeting next spring <laughs> so, we're over there so it only it's only successful if we're back in town hall right on Main Street from my perspective if town hall renovation project is complete with the insurance company and everything else all the issues resolved and it's functional in some fashion over there yeah for FY18 That would be my interpretation of what that means. Is that the town hall? I mean, we're done for the next hundred years? No, I'm not saying that. But I'm just saying for right now, we've got to get out of here, out of you know temporary spaces we've got, and figure out what we're going to do. But I walked through there the other day, um, uh, and it's you know there's still a lot of spaghetti in there. And while I think there's been some progress, I don't know who's pushing to get that job resolved and done. And I was in there in the middle of the day on a Tuesday or Thursday, whatever it was, and there was I was the only person in there. 
there should be crews of people in there every day working. If they're not, we need to know why. Well, to your point, I went in and I talked with guys that were in there, and what I understood was that all the major systems, the infrastructure is all there. It's all intact. It's, it's largely finished stuff. Walls, rugs, ceilings. Um, it's a matter of, you know, I, th I think just getting the green light that that's what we want to do. So I think if we, if we can have our town hall a answered by next year, that would be a really good thing. Okay, so we just have to, uh, all right, so, uh, so is it, um, the uh, renovations completed, or the the the, uh, the fixes completed? Is it uh, is it uh, certain departments moved in? Is it? It's not my motion. Uh, I didn't think we were doing motions at the moment, but well, this is in, the second one. In my mind, the renovations should be pushed to completion so that we have a certificate of occupancy okay. in, for that building. Does that say everyone's over there working right away in some certain by a certain date? No, but a certificate of occupancy means we're done with the renovations. We're done. We should be done with the insurance company, and we're moving on. And then, however we move on, we'll figure that out at that point. But we got to get a CO. We need a CO no matter what happens. And I don't feel that is being pushed right now at all. Correct me if I'm wrong. I did earlier when you showed me that whole thing I talked about last year. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I think it needs to be said that uh, there, there are two components to that project. There's the piece that is under the control of the insurance company. Uh, the insurance is supervising the, the work that's being done. Uh, it's paying for the work that is being done. There's also the component of the project that is under the town's control of which at this point I do not have any confirmed funding namely replacing the fire suppression system we may need to go to town meeting to do that why wouldn't that be part of the insurance yeah. it's pretty obvious the the, the the fire suppression system does not, the one that we had uh, previously, does not comply with the existing Yeah, but part of the codes. insurance company's job, when they insure a place, if there's a loss, they have to bring it up to code. If you had knob and tubing wire in that town hall, they're not going to pay to replace knob and tubing wire. <coughs> they have to bring it up to compliance. Uh, <coughs> I, I can tell you, we have argued every possible angle uh, to push this forward. We have not been successful. Has Ray been involved in that? I, I believe um, Dave may have been working with Jenny from Ray's office. And we've, we've done everything possible by including the you know, sending request to you to attend some of our meetings. Um, it's I can understand where the insurance is coming from, but I, I can't say it publicly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, well, we're giving him the full year, so. Well, which no, he's down to six months. Six months. Yeah, seven months. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And how are we defining the downtown corridor project that goal as being completed? 100% design and funding lined up and ready for construction and over the next two or three years thereafter. All right, so we need to come Fun up with a third one? If yeah, funding lined up including <coughs> the, the town portion? Well, the having gone, make sure we go through that process and have it on the okay. ballot and all those kinds of things, sure. Yeah. Not so saying you're going to get everyone to vote <laughs> yes for it, but yeah, I understand. Yeah. All right, so um, uh, what's the uh, what's number three? Who said we only had could only have three? That's 
school. It's just a general best practice. I know the, for the um, <laughs> we did when you employees, depending Sorry. on we how we do there. Okay. Well, we could have four if we had to. I mean, if someone feels strongly about some stuff. Okay. I don't think it's. I hear your best practice, but you know. The way I, I this is democratic best practice. So right? what so of mine was to up, update the asset management plan. You know what what's the town own? Where is it? What what shape is it in? To, to let's let's get a hold of what we've got and where we have it. And, um, is it useful? Is it not useful? Does it serve a purpose? May I offer a suggestion? Absolutely. Um, realizing we are only left with, practically speaking, six months before the end, the end of the fiscal year, that perhaps the third goal be the public safety joint preparedness, and we do that jointly with the other two chiefs. Well, if I may, I would support that because um, I know when I met with everyone, I spoke with the two chiefs about the importance of that, and I see that's a goal that's been consistent throughout. And if you're looking at you know townwide preparedness, um, it would seem a natural for for the town manager to be involved in um, that kind of planning and communication with the public. So I mean, I think that's a natural partnership. Whether that needs to be one of the goals is not another goal that. Um, you know, it's more important, but that certainly seems like a natural partnership to me. Mr. Starry? I think that's fine. Mr. Hart? I'm okay with that, putting that in there, but I do think that with the changes in the school uh, situation with the new superintendent coming to town here in the next few months, uh, I really think that uh, we should have that relationship and that focus on a healthy dialogue as part of it. So maybe you get four for him. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure that we've actually had the opportunity to witness firsthand Mr. Kamala's relationship <coughs> with his peers on the school side. Uh, I would say that um, I would say that we would have to have better knowledge of that before we put that as a goal and we'd also have to know how we're going to measure that. Um, you know, if, if you wanted to say that our board should have a better relationship with the school committee or something like that, that's something that we would have more direct knowledge of. Mm -hmm. But as far as Mr. Kamala's relationship with the superintendent, I, I don't have any reason to, to question that relationship. I think that relationship is fine. I think it's just the overall significance and importance of the schools to the economy of Hopkinton, to the character of Hopkinton, and to our families, that we should always be making sure we have a focus on working well together. And while I think his relationship with Dr. McLeod is excellent, there's going to be a new superintendent coming in very soon. And, you know, just the general challenges we have annually with budget and everything creates divides sometimes. And when we get into those divides, I think it's that's not healthy for the community. So that's why, I mean, I've always advocated for this kind of one town, one solution concept. And that's really why I'm putting it in there. But if everyone else is comfortable, it's, it's fine. Well, Mr. Kamala, would you be, would you be um, inclined to have a fourth and you could get stats over tax on you? Mm -hmm. Again, I, I, I go back to what the board has said in the past that we're looking for smart goals. Uh, given the time remaining in this year and the fact that we're now heading into the budget season, annual town meeting, four goals may not be doable. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. So, if, uh, so we've got the Main Street Corridor Project to have it. Um, uh, complete and funded and ready ready for for um, shovel ready in uh, what, what's 2019 is that is there, uh, is the money coming in all right and then uh, what well, well, I think it was design complete and the steps in place for funding to be approved to be approved correct all 
All right. And um, the uh, second one was uh, downtown. All right. Yes. Certificate of occupancy. Tunnel. Tunnel. Oh, sorry, sorry. And um, third one. Public, public safety return to the mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Thank you. I couldn't find it. It was online. And public okay. safety return to the Okay. All right. So we've got three for. So the chair uh, entertain a motion to. Uh, uh, make those our three goals for the town manager. So, so moved. Second. Any further discussion? Any none? How do you vote? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstained? Okay, it passes. Okay. Now that was supposed to be the quick one. <laughs> Not as quick tonight. Okay. Let's we'll work with the uh, fire chiefs. We'll just keep running it in order. So um, I think we already got one, public safety joint preparedness. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Okay. Looks like the feasibility of a- Second fire. <coughs> it's actually a third fire station. We have a second fire station already. Yeah. So, uh, fire so chief, fire maybe staff. a second functional one. F fire chief's laughing. Doesn't, doesn't, say, right doesn't say functional. Staffed. Yes. <laughs> yes. Actually, yes, so we're going to make sure we ha say that, staff, functional and staffed, yes. Um, okay, so there's the week, so we've got two. I think everybody's got that one down. That was an easy one. And uh, So we're saying station three or station two? Chief, what would you say? Would you, uh, would you consider... Would well, everyone else is arguing, so I might as well argue about something. Oh, for I'm crying out loud. Chief. When I call that a second fire station, what do you usually say to me? So we're working on response times and effective response forces, and that kind of triggers a second fire station, a third fire station, a fourth fire station. You evaluate it all. So I'm trying to give you some ideas. You might say focus in a spot where we don't just get stuck on a building or no, no, my, my question is when I ask you, I say, well, don't you already have a second one in Woodville? And your usual answer to me is? So part of the dialogue would be there, there is a building in Woodville. It's not staffed. It doesn't affect our responses right now, and that's what I'm trying to get along with the message. That, um, okay. But does it not say Station 2 on the building in Woodville that's owned by our fire department? Sure. Okay. So this okay. would be a Station 3. So the, so it's taking the political high road and not saying anything. <laughs> so the, the goal would be to do could conduct a feasibility study of a third fire station in Hopkinton with full-time staffing as part of that station. Sure, and the only reason I even step in front of the third fire station is we, we had learned a couple years ago just the analysis with where our population is in Hopkinton right now, where the station two currently is. It's in our... Um, more rural area it's probably going to be a more rural area for quite a while and the growth is actually in another area of town we identified that with the work with our Hopkinton Ashland collaboration it's it's good data it, it's it says where our growth and future growth is expected to be in the next based on building permits and future building permits and whatnot so I know that's getting ahead a little bit I just want to help you with the conversation it's most likely Station two is not going to have a longer history with the Hopkins Fire Department. It's just a reality. Okay. So my sense would be as part of this goal to figure out this station, whatever number it is, <laughs> uh, that you're going to need probably a little bit of help to do this. Like I'm talking a serious feasibility study. Like we need some. I know sure. we got great data from that exercise we did for a couple of years together, but I, th I think someone might need to help pull that together because you're busy with other things too. So. Somehow we got to figure that out, but I'd like a formal presentation that we could show town meeting. This is what's going on in town with our public safety. This is what's going on with the fire department, and let's start a serious dialogue. But we need real data to make that happen. Sure. Excellent. Okay, so we've got uh, we've got two. Is there a, 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 a third one? Just we have uh, uh, we've got uh, home home emergency preparedness. Oh, the same thing. Um, 
I, I think I get I get to get a drone. <clears throat> I think that's a task. I don't see that as a real. I know goal. exactly, but uh, but it, it, no, there's a lot involved in that. With setting up training and get, setting up the uh, uh, grants and all that kind of stuff. That's I really like Claire's continue employee develop, development plan and encourage staff growth and motivation and the whole HR piece of the puzzle. I think is important for all of our departments. Brent, oh, yeah, Brendan's got that too. Development, yeah. <coughs> Brendan's got the uh, staffing in there also. Okay, uh, I I go along with that. All right. Three. All right. So, so there was one on our Session station wow. and uh, employee development. Employee development. Okay. There okay. used to be a station three, didn't there? Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, notwithstanding Mr. Tedstone's. Comments. Okay, the chair entertain a motion to uh, now. It, uh, are these in any particular order? These aren't in any particular. Order. Okay, joint task force, um, an additional fire station, uh, uh, a, a a full feasibility study, and uh, work to develop. Um, uh, what's this one? Employee development plan encourage encourage staff growth and motivation. Well, it wasn't joint task force. It's emergency preparedness plan. Number one. Right. No, number one is public safety joint preparedness. Oh, okay. Well, whatever. You're, right, you're on town manager. No, I understand, but this is this is this is we picked this one for town manager. So he's gonna if he's gonna work with public safety, thing. it's gonna be with. Right. He's gonna work with. Uh, Okay. Right. So we already we already know Chief Call Lee's the first same one. Thing across the board, though. Yeah. And um, yeah, so those three. So do we have a, I guess, a motion and a second. Okay. So I guess my motion would be <coughs> for the fire chief's goals to work on that joint task force with the police and the town manager. The mm -hmm. um, feasibility of a Additional. Additional staffed fire station and the um, continue employee development plan and encourage staff growth and motivation. We have a second. Second. Any further discussion? I, I just want to make sure that it's spelled out that the joint task force is for emergency preparedness. Okay. Well, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 well, yeah, it was just yeah, public safety joint preparedness is <coughs> right. what we had up here. But yeah, that's fine. It's yeah, for sure. I mean, emergency yes. preparedness, community emergency preparedness is, is the is the purpose of the whole right. thing. Yes. And not just for picnics. No. no. <laughs> okay. Okay. So all, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Chief Lee. Um, I think we got your first one. <laughs> the emergency preparedness to work. Please yep. work with the town manager and the uh, and the fire chief. All right. Um, what else we got? I think we had a discussion <coughs> when we had a discussion last meeting. <coughs> the chief was pretty high on the, and I won't use the marijuana. High on the marijuana, but. Is high on the feasibility for the canine. Mm -hmm. So oh, right. I like that thought process. If, if that's obviously something that the chief mm -hmm. looked into, <coughs> and if, if he thinks that it would be feasible for our town to have that, and, uh, and that would take us to another level, I think that that's a great. That I don't know if he's going to be able to get that done before the close of the fiscal year, but it's motivating for him. Get him moving. I, I'd go along with that. Mm -hmm. Chief, can you do both SRO and the K-9 uh, by the end of the year? Absolutely. Yeah. My, my uh, preference between the two would be expansion of the SRO program. But would you put both in there? Yeah, I, I'd go on both of those. I, yeah. I think the, 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 the SRO is just incredible. The way our, our, our students, but when you think about um, the way police are looked at throughout the country and, and, and the troubles they've been having, and, and to have uh, our SRO having such a great relationship at, uh, in all the schools, and then to uh, to have that um, uh, level of, of of partnership 
what the, what the students passed on, I think would be incredible. So I, mean, I, I think we have to take advantage of OPP while he's here and uh, you know, pass and him on what he knows. And Absolutely. So we're going to have two things in that goal. Assess expanding the SRO program and assess a canine unit for the department. They can be separate. Those separate. Those are separate. Two separate ones. Then those are the joint task force. Okay, so and then there's four the coming for the chief. We've got to do more youth outreach, oh, or is that what you're talking That's about? That's what the SRO. Yeah, the SRO. Youth yeah. outreach, expand yeah. the SRO and staffing, staffing and services. So it's three. No, Joe. that's the, okay. So let's yes, we, three. Emergency, canine, yes. and SRO. That's three. Yes. Okay. Okay. How does everybody think about those three? I guess I just want to make sure for the SRO program that that includes youth outreach, drug and alcohol awareness programs for, well, for, the, for teens. Well, the, the way that, the mm -hmm. way that uh, Sistari has uh, youth outreach, expand the SRO staffing and services. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's the same way, it's basically the way I wrote it in the band. Uh, yeah, youth it's outreach, right. expand SRO staffing and services for K to 12 drug and alcohol programs and teen mental health. I like that. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Short of that, anything short of that, I think is missing some key components. Mm -hmm. That's okay. all. Yeah. Well, that, uh, I looked at that. That's what they did. Okay. So we've got uh, those three. Can be honest. Want to give them a fourth? No, I'm going okay. to three. Okay. Make sure that. you guys. Okay. All right. So Tom, <laughs> the chair will entertain a, a motion to. Uh, Except those three as uh, as the goals for the police chief. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. How do you vote? Aye. 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 Any, any opposition? Any abstentions? Okay. Excellent. Thanks, chiefs. All right. So, um, Chief Lee, are you staying there? Are you looking for more goals? No, no. <laughs> 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 Come on. <laughs> Just get it done. Okay. Liaison reports. I got nothing. Um, Mrs. Wright and I attended a school committee meeting two or three weeks back now where they introduced their budget uh, for. FY19 and uh, the discussion is getting going. There's some significant challenges with special education funding for that fiscal year, um, but the dialogue will continue. Um, but it was good to attend and sort of watch sort of how they count the pennies as they develop their, their model. Other than that, I don't have anything else that I can remember at the moment. Is this a story? No. He's right. Uh, yeah, a couple things. Um, Sandra School Reuse Committee is working on putting together the first of public forums for some time in January. We can kind of have a public brainstorming session. Um, I know they've kicked her out either the 20th or the 27th of January, but that's not set in stone. But look for something in the end of January um, on that. Uh, uh, as liaison, I attended the Historic District Commission, had a site walk out at uh, Marathon Way, and also a meeting the other night where they brought in BHB and members of the public to talk about that section of the Main Street Quarter um, with much discussion about perhaps looking at one of the other four alternatives that allowed for parking and keeping the roadway open. Um, there are I've expressed concerns and the public expressed concerns too in the behalf of Marathon set up center trail pushing traffic off the main road into the secondary residential streets, um, veterans issues. So there are some causes for them to, uh, I think, re-examine and, and rediscuss that. So their their um, DHB has heard some of those comments. So that's an update for that. And just finally. Um, I have been for the last couple of sessions attending the seven, or the five town board of selectmen's meeting. And I know Mr. Sestari went to one. I don't know if you did, John. Uh, their next one is scheduled for December seventh, and there is a center school reuse committee meeting that is 
more important for me to attend. So if someone else wants to go to that to represent Hopkinton, it is on December 7th in Millis at 7 p.m. at the Millis Town Hall on Main Street. And it would be nice for Hopkinton to be represented. It won't be me. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, I forgot one item. Um, the, as the liaison, I'm also on the uh, superintendent search committee, and that is uh, moving quickly and judiciously through a process. There was lots of great applications, and there's a solid process in place to figure that out. But it's very active. I spent two days last week checking it out. And the uh, Upper Charles uh, Trails Committee is uh, right at, 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 well, they, they're probably out of their meeting by now. Um, they were uh, discussing the Effecto property purchase, um, which will greatly help us with uh, the downtown corridor when um, it allows uh, better drainage uh, for stormwater. That's on Cedar Street? Where is Cedar that? Street, yeah. Oh, Cedar Street. It's the marsh on the left. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, and that also allows the uh, allows them to have a uh, another trail entrance. Option. Yes, um, those are looking from the town side and from their side. Mm -hmm. This is a f there are there are a few different groups that uh, thought it was a it was a good property to purchase. That would that be the house or just the land in back? Um, it's not the house; it's the land. It's, it's the land. land. There's already so an existing land. culvert there. Okay, so it's not not taking the house. Okay. Um, Town manager's report. Yes. Um, oh, shoot. We've, I had hoped to go over the entertainment and amusement policy with the board. I want to approach this differently. We made some changes to the policy in response to the previous discussion by the board. Specifically, we added a provision exempting certain types of entertainment from the policy. I think based on tonight's discussion, that list needs to be trimmed down further. Mm -hmm. And then number two, we also added a definition for the amplifier based on the conversation that the board had made with regard to the differences between radios, uh, phones, and other internet-based radio systems. Again, based on tonight's discussion, I think that li that list needs further review. <laughs> per the board's uh, suggestion, we'd also e added uh, the notice provision under Section 4H. And then we gave the board full discretion to set hours. This was based on our most recent experience with uh, Cornell's. We also uh, defined the Section 177 licenses as annual licenses. Um, we had sought and received input from the board that that was the way to go. So with that in mind, and also based on tonight's discussion, I'm suggesting that perhaps I should schedule a work session with the board where we can talk much more detail about the issues that have come up in the recent weeks. Uh, I, I think we, we may have a better product uh, if we have some focused discussions. This could be mm -hmm. simply, you know, all of us coming together, which I think always benefits from the deliberation that we can. Um, failing which I can also meet with the smaller uh, uh, groups or one-on-one -on -one with board members. Okay. Is that all you have for us? Um, that's one. The, the, the other piece is, this is an issue, I, I throw the chair. It's an issue that came to my attention just before the meeting. Uh, namely, we've been working hard and diligently. Perhaps let me stop here and ask Mr. Brian here to leave the room. Oh, yes. Yes, this, this is in regard to solar. Solar? Yeah. Can, before he leaves, can I just make a comment on the entertainment thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I may. Um, <laughs> I, was, I was just blown away by the complexity of this. And then the discussion we had, I, I, I just... Uh, it just seems incredibly onerous and bureaucratic, and I, it, it just... Yeah, well, that's why he's coming. He'll, I would like to see it this, tightened up. But one thing that I noticed if you're working on it is in, under the section of um, violations or penalties for violations, um, 
there's suspensions of like one to three days, two to five days, or <coughs> whatever. But um, those suspensions don't work if it's someone that provides entertainment, maybe just on the weekends or just once. Um, I mean. If it's a daily entertainment, then a suspension of a couple days would be meaningful. But if they don't provide entertainment <coughs> each day, if they only do it, you know, as, again, weekends or periodically or whatever, um, we need to find a way to, you know, assess a penalty for a, a business that doesn't <coughs> do it on a daily. Like a pitcher that gets a three a three game suspension. <coughs> Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Just. <laughs> Something, something okay. to think about when you're no, no comment needed. But when you go back to the drawing board, I, w I would look at the um, penalties so that they there's a way to apply something for an enterprise that doesn't fit with this every day. Okay. Okay. That's it. So solar. Yep. Solar. Yeah. <coughs> See ya. <coughs> Me coughing. Yeah. Okay, Mrs. Kamala. As you may recall, uh, previously I advised the board about the opportunity um, to work in partnership um, with SELECT in installing solar panels on the DPW building. We've spent the last two months working on that partnership. And I can tell you this is one of the most advantageous agreements that I've ever seen in, 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 in my career regarding solar provision. And we are now at that point where we're ready to sign a lease. Um, and I'm asking uh, for the board's authorization to proceed and sign the lease so that at least we can apply for the building permit and have the panels installed prior to the snow uh, coming down. Here's why this 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 partnership is beneficial and advantageous to the community. First and foremost, all the materials, the labor, is going to be paid for by Solet. This, this, this whole system is going to be gifted to the town. That's number one. Number two, in most cases, what you see is an agreement whereby a private entity installs the systems, captures the solar, and pushes it into the building, and then charges the recipient or the host for the electricity. This electricity would be at no cost to the town. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then thirdly, we've also built into the agreement, and Select was willing to do this, um, the provision which basically says at the end of the period where the the, the credits the that I end, yes exactly uh, sees coming to the project the town assumes the, the 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 complete infrastructure at no cost to the town we've also worked out and I, 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 alongside that, the main question would be, well, well, how is the town going to maintain this system? So that has agreed to continue that partnership with the town beyond that first 10 year period, um, where we've discussed some amount as to, some number that the town may have to pay for the general maintenance. Um, one thing that we also discussed, in fact, this will apply from the time the, the list begins, is that Solet will also be responsible for removing the snow and the panels should there be some issues for the DPW building. Um, so overall, I believe this is <coughs> a partnership that is very advantageous to the community. I, I, am, I am pleased that Solet was willing to go as far as they did, mm -hmm. uh, far beyond what you normally find in these standard agreements. Uh, and. It stands to be said, this is a good deal for the community. Any questions for Mr. Kamala? Well, certainly, you know, I mean, it's, I'm very happy to hear this. Um, it doesn't shock me knowing, 
knowing the people behind Select, their history with the town, um, Select's generosity in the past, and, and I guess caring about the community. Um, it, you know, I mean, it's just a, this is just one more example, but a, a, <laughs> a fantastic yeah. example. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, I mean, I guess the only thing I have to say is, you know, thank you to Select. Because uh, you know, this is a fantastic opportunity for us. That's wonderful. That's all. I get. Thank you, Select. Tis the season. So I got to. <clears throat> I'm on another committee, and I got to brought up to speed a little bit more on solar. Um, and he was willing to do the. I think something very similar. Um, that just didn't work out. But I was brought up to speed, as far as how the solar works. And the, um, I'll echo Mr. Sestari's comments on Select and more specifically Mr. Driscoll on what a, a selfless, um, generous person he is to the town of Hopkinton and his company. Um, and I think that this is a, a great, great deal for the town. And the, this solar array that he's, that he's putting on is is wonderful and I don't know the exact percentage they're assuming that this will um, feed the town of the DPW or whatever but uh, anything is good and I know that uh, when it comes to getting his uh, you know doing his donations for the town of Hopkinton he pulls out all the, the, the bells and whistles so uh, again thank you Mr. Driscoll and thank you to uh, select and uh, we're very gracious recipients of your generosity. So, uh, Mr. Kamala, what's the uh, motion that you're looking for? Just to, to sign the lease, a uh, motion to sign the lease agreement? Yeah, to authorize the town manager to execute the lease with Select. Uh, and, and I think also, given the, the comments I'm receiving from the board, uh, I think at a future meeting, I would like to invite Ms. the Select team mm -hmm. um, so that the board could formally express what you just shared with the community tonight. Excellent. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. While we put together a, 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 a thank you. Doctor. Thank you. Yeah. So I'll make that motion to accept the lease as written. Yeah. Or no, to authorize the town manager. To authorize the town manager to execute the lease. Yeah. Do we have a second? I will second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, anything else on the uh, town manager's report? Um, it, just as an FYI, we <coughs> we're beginning. Uh, we are now at that point where we can begin some of the budget discussions. I think there are some departments that have identified that I would like to see uh, engage with the board on the proposals that they've put forth for their departments. Uh, this includes um, fire, police, DPW, and the library. So, and I, I actually have one more. If you could, um, I don't know what we're allowed to talk about or not talk about when it comes to um, the um, Eversource, and, uh, and because you, the, I know that your department has uh, has made some great strides at uh, trying to get the um, uh, state house helping us, and and uh, a lot of uh, documents have changed hands, and we're making progress. Yeah. Okay, so okay. You're not right. saying, okay, that's amazing. All right, um, future board agenda items. Um, I'd like for us to uh, discuss the funds that are coming back to the town uh, from the library, uh, in particular the fundraising effort that they uh, took on head on and, and did a fantastic job raising a million dollars toward the construction of the library. Uh, I'd like for us to have some type of an analysis done to determine you know how the town typically deals with a, a sum of money like that is it something where we can put it in a fund where uh, you know there's some modest investments that will gain us interest to make payments off the construction loan or if we're best off just 
putting a million dollar payment directly toward the loan to lower the principal. Uh, but I think that we should we should have some options in line so that we know how we want to handle that when we get that check. Thank you. Ms. Ray. Nothing tonight. Nope. So, Mr. Hurd, anything? Any no, other than the stuff we covered earlier as part of the meeting, there's some things we're going to follow up on. I think I'm fine. Excellent. Mr. Kamala, do you have anything that you'd like to? No, I'm all set. Thank you. Ms. Lazarus? Anything? Excellent. With then, I will, uh, I'd like to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. We have a lot in this town to be very thankful for. I do have a lot to be thankful for, but, you know, being at the uh, new library, uh, new school coming up, DPW. So thank you very much, everyone, and have a great Thanksgiving. All right. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> Any abstentions? <laughs>